All right, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Gamelon. Get on my line, Gamelon line. Finals day, you already know what it is. You've been watching the EU tournament. Uh, dude, they've been awesome to watch all throughout quarantine. Mm-hmm. I mean, forever, honestly. Uh, but especially throughout quarantine, Spencer Tour and Gamble online, they were great. But now we're bringing you the NA stuff, North America Tour. Heck. I am doing well, man. Not too much. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to get into these top 16 matches. We're already underway, and we have a sick matchup coming up. Starting off, we have 8-Bitman versus Mr. E on the winner side of the bracket. So I'm excited to get into things. The tournament's been great so far. Obviously, we just saw the EU top eight, as you said. And now we're trying to figure out who's making it to this last few, a few slots. Yeah, we've already had a couple crazy matches go on. Um, guys, we're getting the stream booted up. Spargo is advancing on his winner side set. He went... 3-2 against Reggie. Yeah, I think Reggie is, I mean, everyone knows, obviously, Meister is a Game & Watch master, but I think Reggie is not too far behind him uh, in terms of high, high, top-quality Game & Watchers. So, 3-2 set right there. You know, Spargo knows that matchup well, and he plays characters that do well in that matchup. So, that's very impressive from Reggie. Uh, almost taking the set down, bringing it to 3-2. But we're going to start with Mr. E versus 8 Man, East Coast, uh, going to Nam. A little tri-state against Florida. A heated debate kind of recently, so it's going to be a fun match to talk about a little bit. Both of these guys would probably be on the starting rosters of those teams. Florida, Georgia, and uh, dude, it's so competitive, though. It's so close. So. You know, I was going to say, I thought you were almost talking about what's happening on Twitter today. Like, you can almost talk about so many different, like, Twitter discourses. People talking about the, the CEO registration, CEOs in Florida. Oh, I missed that. I'm going yeah, to register yeah, for CEO soon. I can't wait. I'm going to pick if, if you, sign up for my favorite If you get an invite so. for it, man, depending on who you talk to. But, uh, well, yeah, we have a... I've got privilege. Bro. I'm not worried about it. I think they're just going to slide, you know, since I have... No, I'm just kidding. That's all the discourse. Dude, I'm not kidding. Gotta... way, anyway, moving on. You gotta have the 1v1 versus Jabali in the ring. Yeah, we have a Florida oh, nice. versus New York matchup. We have nine players actually remaining in the bracket from the U.S., but a bunch more from the East Coast. Mystery versus 8-Bit Man. And if I remember correctly, uh, currently the set score between these two is just about 4-1. to one. Mr. E up four games on, on 8-Bit Man and has won the last two sets between them. Dude, I don't know how many, Dak, are you in chat stayed up last night to watch the, the Japan tournament? What a great time watching some top-level Lucina and Rob as we're seeing again here in front of Van Hampton on a hell of a show last night as it's Zach Ray, as we're going to see both these competitors do too. Uh, both of them still winners, so good to see for both of them to even come up with in this matchup. Absolutely, and you're already seeing this. I mean, pretty even as we get started on Town and City, but he finds himself in the corner, breaks himself out. Of course, he's one of those players where you're never sure how far he's going to make it into the bracket, but it's great to see him not only this far, but on the winner side. Yeah, I love seeing me do well, man. Because when when he does well, he's like he's playing on all you know, firing on all cylinders. I think Absolutely. he just needs to find an ability, his ability to hit all of his. He has all the components to be a top top tier player. He just needs to find it uh, and unlock it to do it all the time. You know what I'm saying? And I love seeing him when he does it. But right now he's got the wall in front of him. Eight bit man camping at the ledge here, setting up down smash. Ooh, does a good get up there by Mr. E. Able to avoid that. Oh, doesn't get the read though on the tech. And now just looking for these arrows to try and get Ape Man back into the corner. Does so, trying to shark there through the corner. Nice tech gets back in, but who's gonna get the better of it is gonna be the up tilt right at max range for Mr. E. Still have kill percent, of course, but does get that first blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crucial too against a character like Rob. Kind of keep you out, kind of force the pressure. Force Ooh. your hand, you feel like you need to approach in, but good DI from Mr. E. Again, going right to the corner. Oh no, you're that's not gonna live that one. from downtown. Yeah, I mean, you know, he definitely wants to, you know, keeping those moves out for, at range, but from that far, Rob obviously can just snipe you, especially when you're lingering towards that right blast up. Definitely. That was a great string by, by 8-Bit, man, too. Just following up with the offense, man. Something he's been doing for a long, long time. Yeah, and I like that 8-Bit, man, he's not working the top end too much. He's not trying to force the gyro, and he's pretty well, you know, good at using items himself, so I wouldn't, you know, get put it past 8-Bit Man that he's really just trying to keep it simple here, especially when against Lucina, who's going to be boxing in a close quarter, so he can't really pull the gyro as safely as he can against you know, other matchups. Yeah, I think that's a good point, and in terms of this matchup too, Dak, I think it's going to come a lot down to who can edge guard better too. I think both these guys... Ooh, hold on. And there's the ooh. grab. See, you put into his hands already. That's pressure immediately on 8-Bit Man's shield. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, nice job. I, I think Rob has some great, great aerials, and especially that Nair in that back air. Very good hitboxes. They linger for a long time, have good power behind them. 
thing is, they have that startup though. So if you're, uh, you know, if you have push buttons in the air like Regina does and good reach on them, you can get test drop in the air pretty easily. Aside from, I think Fair is going to be his best tool going air to air there. But either way, here comes Mr. E, racking up the lead damage here, Dak. Yeah, a bit of a missed input, I think, with that side beam. A bit similar to the previous stock, except Mystery with a little bit less damage done and is still maintaining control of this gyro, which has been huge for him. Oh, gets too low. Might have been scared of the down air. Doesn't get close enough to the up B. Gets on his last stock now, but has just a bit of a lead and is going to start piling on some more damage. I like that down air a lot. You want to talk about lingering aerials from Rob. I mean, that's one of them, but we got to keep moving on the match here, okay? Oh, there we go. Trying to get some down tilt pokes in and still keeping E on these platforms because, you know, you can get that up air from Rob and that could kill early. There's the up air. You can shark through his platforms as well. If you can keep E on these platforms, it's exactly what 8 Man wants to do. That's how he'll be able to rack up a little more damage consistently. But there's another option right there. Those down tilt and now has him off stage racking up that down air. Could have been it. Oh, but, but he misses <laughs> it. The <laughs> reach. I did not think that was going to reach all the way, man. That must have been the top, top hit of that hitbox. What an offensive string there from 8-Bit Man. Start with those down tilt stack, and then leading all the way to the end. Mr. E had an amazing early up B, actually, to contest again. Mm -hmm. Beat that down air before it came out, which is great. He defended himself so well. Then he tried to go high over Rob, which is dangerous for a couple different reasons. Obviously, the up air could be there to intercept. 8-Bit Man was doing so great with his forward airs that whole time, but then the up smash is the move that came in, actually. Love that option from 8-Bit Man. Take it down that game one. That was great. Absolutely. I mean, he might have been afraid of the down smash at ledge. So looking to maybe jump over that. But honestly, 8-Bit Man, really well played. Once he got E on those platforms, he didn't let up. Continued to keep him on the platforms, continued to anti-air, then got him off stage, did some more damage projectiles, and the kill was essentially confirmed from there. You can see how important it is to make sure Lucina doesn't land, especially on a, on a stage like Town and City. You want to keep Lucina not, you know, not grounded so you can rack up that damage as they try to recover and try to get back to land. Absolutely. I think... It's funny, too, because I feel like 8 -Bit Man, the thing that he did better, obviously, at the end was just taking that last knock first. Um, but he put himself in a good <laughs> position to do it with that offensive string that he had. Those down tilts from Rob, not only were yeah. they good damage, but it pushed Mr. E all the way off stage too. It yep. put him in that situation where you start ledge trapping, you know, try to down air him a couple more times. I mean, I'd be surprised if 8-Bit Man doesn't hit a down air before the set's over off stage, for sure. I, I just think he's really good with that move. I think Mr. E is getting set off stage a lot. I think the I'm just playing the odds here is what I'm saying. It looks like we're going back to town and city, which, you know, can't really argue with that. I honestly think that match still could have gone, you know, that game could have gone either way. I just want to run it back real quick or get right back into it and, you know, don't want to cool off in any kind of way. So don't blame me for going right back here. And again, has control of that gyro. Doesn't have the lead just yet, but does have Ape Man on this platform. But Rob doesn't have any problem getting back to the stage that often. Oh, but the platform coming back, that was the issue and it cost him. Yeah, that was unfortunate timing on the platform, of course, but you gotta give Mr. E a lot the of stretcher. compliments there. In terms, yeah, the stretcher, but Mr. E had the positioning. You know what I'm saying? Yep, like, exactly. he had the awareness. Oh, nice, good shield work right there. Forward smash, easy punish. Has to be careful with those side Bs. That's the Ooh. second or third time that he's used that, like in neutral, kind of, you know, unprovoked, and he's completely punished it and continues to pile on more damage oh. and then the spike <laughs> right through to make it 3 1. Yeah, amazing. I mean, we're talking about 8-Bit Man, how he's going to hit some down airs, hit some spikes, but we're seeing Mr. E do it first, actually, right at the ledge. I like that, too, because I thought 8-Bit Man had a great path to recovery there. He went high towards center stage, and then he faded back just to give himself some space. Uh-oh, ah, Mr. E's cooking right now. Hold on, hold on. we got to get back to the match. Can't talk about the past. Mr. E's trying to close this one out real quick. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Love the footstool to recover, man. An extreme amount of sauce right here. <laughs> this is this is almost getting greasy right now. This is crazy. This should this should <laughs> this should kill. Yeah. Oh no! Gets out of it. Up air. Not gonna, might, might have actually got the SDI in time. Gonna go for attempt number two. Platforms come in. The assisted KO. But still, E with such a lead right now. Not much of an incentive yeah. to approach, but knows that you know wants to keep the pressure on Rob and get the gyro. And and Ape Man gives it right to him. But gonna slug him out to get some more room, some breathing room. Yeah, it's a state, statement of non-movement. You know what I'm saying? I'm standing, yep. I'm sitting center stage. You have to take this stock first before you even think about making a comeback. Oh, double up B. Yeah, he mashed it. He was scared to dive. Down air? Is he gonna do it again? No, I like it. The mix up. Pull the ledge. Oh, okay, again? back row onto the platform. Almost got stretched a second oh. time. That would have been really painful. Yeah. Go for the down throw, obviously. It didn't work. Huge hospital man with the right Mm-hmm. Okay. Gyro with the help. Nice, great awareness by E to use the back air to get the gyro away. Mm -hmm. Oh, the counter, that was so good. Great reaction. It, it's cool because you see Mr. E like, 
You see lower level Lucina's use that counter, maybe a little too much, but I think that's pretty sure it's the first one he's thrown out so far. Yeah, it is. successful with it, so it's like, you gotta use them like when it's really gonna... Oh see no, gonna uh, yeah. I think that was uh, a bit of a missed input there. Might have either just looked for an, an air dodge or an up air dodge, but got a little it's freaked out from the up B. Yeah, it's like a it's like a forced error though. You know what I mean? Like Mister yeah. e was hovering in that area. Oh, it, for sure. It looked like he was going for the up B. It looked like he was going for the tech, and it was really late, mm -hmm. something like that. But either way, we saw something similar actually on this E in game one where uh, he just he just fell. Like he, his up B couldn't reach the right. ledge because uh, Ape Man had put it down air right out at the perfect time. So. Either way, that was the we're gonna call that one a forced error, basically. For yeah. sure. And he's trying to attack exactly to, chat. Yeah, and he had to he had to also keep in mind that footstool is also an option. So he's trying to stay away from that. He's trying to, you know, stay close <laughs> to the ledge, stay close to the stage too. But yeah, so I mean it goes pretty much like one one just quickly, just like that. The running back works out for E. So Ape Man does have the advantage considering he took game one, but I no momentum lost, energy lost whatsoever on E side. Yeah, I think he he came out swinging, man, and it really worked out. Mm -hmm. He just didn't let up on the offense. Uh, got his kill confirmed or hit his kills when he needed to, especially that that down air on the second stock. That was just shattering. It would have been so hard to come back from that. Two strikes, as you can see. Oh, those aren't from Eight Bit Man though, because uh, he was the game. But I don't I don't know if we're gonna go back to town. I feel like that was pretty decisive in the side of Mister E. So if I'm Eight Bit Man, I'm thinking about a different stage. Absolutely. And you have, we'll if see. you're in the if you're in the position to move off of. I mean, a neutral stage, really, where both players traded hands, traded evenly. Why not? But yeah, Mystery definitely looked, I would say, stronger in game two. Maybe Ape Man's win in game one. So most likely just want to move off Town and City. And indeed, we are going to FD, which is uh, probably no surprise to anybody. Yeah. Classic for Rob, man. He controls so much of the stage with the gyro down. Even though if you're even if you're a character that's good air mobility and likes to be in the air a lot, still controlling that space and, and knowing when someone's gonna jump is so important for Rob. So you see Mr. or you see Ape Bit Man going for the fair. It's a really, really, like I said, a good dog fighting tool in this matchup. You go air to air, the reach, and good frame data on that move versus his other moves. And you save like a lot if you're racking up the damage of fair, you're saving the diminishing returns on your other moves that you might want to save for kills. So it's a really good move to use in this matchup, as you can see. And also a move we're seeing a little more often here because of the extra afforded room is that is that gyro, right? He's pulling that out almost any opportunity he has. He has so much more real estate, but Mystery going deep to try and keep away. Use the forward air to keep him at bay. Eat it, man. Very low on gas. And again, the air dodge. I don't think he'd be able to make it back in time. He has no more juice left in the tank. That air dodge, I don't think, was proper. I mean, I'm not entirely sure if he's either just miscoordinated there. Again, maybe looking to tech or avoiding that, you know, Spike there, but he again the pressure in the corner to keep him scared and can't get him back running out that engine and he takes the lead. It's something that notoriously is robbed, you have to be really good at teching because you're gonna get pinged into the stage a lot. It's what Mr. E's looking for. Mm -hmm. So far he's two for two with it in terms of getting stocks. Those are pretty much forced errors though. They're not actually like, oh I missed the tech. It's actually exactly. like kind of the opposite. Like you didn't need to tech and you hit the button anyway, but you still took the stock. And I have a feeling Mr. E's gonna let up on those dolphin slashes off stage in the offensive. So really good stuff. It's kind of like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep going with the strategy. We know cool. Ape Man can hit those techs, but he's got to do it in this set. Oh, almost able to get that reflection and does so on the gyro going back into the corner. Ape Man looking for those nares. We a lot of knockback to get some more damage. Put E in position to maybe get a laser off. Down air going to get blocked. And he just holding the center of that stage, wants to stay away from the corner as much as he can, but then they're gonna get caught up by the laser once more, even with like 2%, but the side being neutral, we haven't seen it in a while from Ape Man, and it catches Mystery off guard. Yeah, catch them jumping. That's gonna be a big thing in this matchup, like we said. There it is, okay. I like it, yep. he just fades away from the stage. He's like, you know what? If you catch me with the back air, that's gonna be a stock. However, I'm not gonna go near that stage and try to tech here. I know I'm not having a good time with that, so I'm just gonna eliminate it from the, from the options on the table. Down tilt and read. Doesn't get the poke with the back air, but once again gets Ape Man back in the corner. Not somewhere he's entirely uncomfortable with, but these you know, these tilts from, from Lucina, extremely scary once you get yourself up from the ledge. Ah. So you're getting caught by the gyro. Good job by Ape Man clearing some space here. I like that he's going for the back air. I wouldn't be surprised though if we see Mr. E get a little aggressive. He's done a couple back airs off stage to recover now, and Rob is vulnerable when he's doing that. Like he does have end lag on that move, so don't be surprised. Mr. E's no stranger to going out off stage and getting aggressive too. So I wonder if he's gonna pick up on that and try to get crazy here on this last dog. And great timing there by Mr. E catches that spot dodge in place with the up air as he approaches in to get that kill. Still of course in kill percent here, but racking it up with the extra credit. 
Might be able to get that gyro instead of Void. Ape Man almost oh, gets the up B. Not going to get a full stage spike, but still a lot of damage on this last stock here as he continues to put the pressure on. Forced back here by the gyro, but E, more than familiar with getting back on stage against it. Yep. Rolling his way past two, mix up the. Ooh. Yep, there he is. Aggressive off stage. All the rage that he needed right there, Dak. That's going to be a nair. Close to the blast zone, enough to take out even the heavy Rob. Really good stuff there. I'm telling you, Mr. E really mixing up his stuff at the ledge in terms of offense and defense. When he's picking his get up the ledge option, really mixing it up well. Also picking when he stays at the ledge to do his ledge trapping versus going off an edge guarding. Really, really good stuff by Mr. E. That was awesome. Yeah, his knowledge of like knowing when not to hesitate when Rob's off stage, like, okay, I got to go in and get them while they think, all right, I have some time to linger a little bit here. It's, I mean, yep. he's almost nailing it perfectly almost every single time. And it's that confidence from, I mean, the experience that Mystery has on the character like Christina for sure. Yeah, he's always been known to be aggressive off stage and to, yep. but he also like, that's the thing with ease. Like he, he could definitely play a lot of different parts of the game really well, especially ledge trapping, of course. Uh, he did it a lot. Uh, throughout his entire career as a Smash player, but obviously an ultimate really well with Lucina. She's so quick in this game, he could just really take full advantage of that. So great job by Mr. E. Mixing up ledge trapping, edge guarding, all that important stuff you have to do as Lucina. And one mm -hmm. thing that Rob does so well is that he he's kind of a comeback machine. Uh, until you take his last stock, he could just back throw you and side B you and KO you instantly. You know what I mean? Like if you're up 300% on his last stock and then he gets you down to your last stock, it's like almost an even game. You know, <laughs> I know it's like, you know, not actually, but you know what I'm saying? Like Rob can steal games pretty easily. He's definitely explosive like that. And it's sometimes hard to like get your footing. Like he can continue to get reads on you and kind of like chase you down with his projectiles. It's hard to like, okay, like reset the neutral here. Especially yeah. characters don't have projectiles or, you know, get off me moves or maybe even a better out of shield game. So, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I mean, I still think 8-Bit Man is, should be fine going into this next game, but Mystery's really turned it on. I was talking about it last night. I think something that's kind of underrated about Rob, or at least it's not really talked about enough, is like, you know, everyone talks about how good, you know, obviously Gyro is and how good Side B is off stage, and he has so mm -hmm. many good things about him there when he's trying to land, all that good stuff. But the thing is, I don't think enough people talk about his grab game. Like, his grab is good because he'll have down throw, obviously, for a kill confirm anywhere on the map, or like a, a, a potential to kill anywhere on the map. Like, if you down throw and bury, get that up smash or the up air in the right spot, they're dead. Um, but then he also has back throw, which he can act out of almost immediately, like almost not quite as good as Charizard, but like he's really quick with it. Like it's a really good mix up if you're not ready for it. And then he has up throw that at low percentages is a combo throw. And then it also can kill if you're not feeling confident with your, if you're, if they're at a high enough percentage, you're not feeling good enough about your down throw. So really, really good throw game. Honestly, I think all his throws are great. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those aspects of his game where people are so worried about dealing with him at a zoning range that they're not mentally thinking about if they get grabbed or worried about yeah. that at all. So it's like something that he can like kind of keep up his, I don't know, Rob doesn't have a sleeve, but if he had one, yeah. <laughs> where that's where it would be, right? Well, and and it's easy to kind of keep that condition for your opponent not to look for because they're getting zoned a lot of the time or they're getting spaced up like fair or they're getting down tilted, you know, which yeah, is exactly. another very a common option at the grab range, you know? So like they're not worried about grab they're worried about down tilt so you he start just throwing has grabs so many in. yeah i think you're saying it well dak he has so much going for him honestly as a character i think the down tilt is the key there too down tilt grab and then yes. zoning with gyro and laser is just like overall an exceptionally strong game plan for this character but mr e swinging out of the gates literally with his sword almost 50 percent on 8-bit man carry him all the way across kalos uh 8 man trying to build a little bit of distance between him and mr e makes sense i feel like that's what rob does best in the matchup but once you get in that sword range mr e closes the gap very quickly and by the way, stakes here. The winner of this match will be taking on Spargo in winner's semis, who's waiting for them after they just took on a 3-2 win over Reggie. So waiting for them, the waiting for the winner of this match. Yeah. Spargo, man. Kid's amazing. We'll see what he can do in the next round. One of these guys is going to have to play against him, so we'll see. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking Kalos pretty uh, solid pick here for Rob. Obviously, you can get a lot done here with these platforms being over the ledge. I think that's really the biggest thing, right? It really opens up his ledge game, gives him a lot more freedom. Right, yeah. And, and we were saying that, too. This is where Mystery has been so good. Look at that. Still oh. actually using the platform there yeah. um, to extend his jump. Like, getting his jump back, double jumping, and reaching all the way to the top. We saw that in an earlier game where Mystery couldn't quite reach 8-Bit Man when he went to the top. But with that extra platform, very resourceful for Mystery to take down that first stock of this game. And you were talking about how like Rob can be explosive, kind of steal stocks, steal games. Lucina, I think, is a similar character in some ways. Where you're trying to get away from her, and that kind of puts you in a position where you kind of get up air off the top like that, right? Or you're getting back air off that, you know, the side uh, boundaries at like 70%. 
So like stuff or gear getting countered. So I think Lucina has the, the same kind of volatility here too, and definitely can make use of those platforms really well and you know, extending strings and also really, you know, making more use of her great aerials. Definitely. I mean, we saw that already in this set. We saw, yeah. you know, in game two, game three, when he went off stage with the Nair. A lot of rage to close up the game. Oh, goodness. Here he goes around the platform. So you got to compliment his ability to move around these platforms and really be explosive with his offense. This is ridiculous stuff from Mr. E. Uh-oh. Oh, two to the down. That was rude, yeah. <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> just threw it right back at him. Take the damage. Up the okay, down throw. He's going to go for it. Yep. Ah, this is what I'm talking about. Anywhere on the map, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Some characters have kill throws. And they need to be in a certain spot for them to work. You know, a good back throw to KO, anything like that. But if you get that down throw and you get the up smash or the up air follow up, works pretty much anywhere. It's really, really strong. So it's the good stuff. And you see that and you think, does Rob need that? Does Rob <laughs> need to have all those things? <laughs> it's definitely a conversation <laughs> that, yeah. that has been had. Uh oh, off stage, Mystery's got to recover. He does have his jump. Love that dolphin splash. Ambiguous landing there between the platform, the ledge, and then also just landing on the stage. I love that positioning for that upbeat. Very smart I about, stuff. I was about to see, say, yeah, the platform's like in the perfect position for Lucina, Marth, like up is Like, just you can make that ambiguous, like land on stage, land on platform. And Rob, like, doesn't have the speed necessarily to respond every single time. That back air, though, to get the lead. And that's nice, but still high percent here. Oh, the up B though, I mean, he's starting to get, maybe not desperate, but you don't want to start fishing like that. That being said though, having gyro control, absolutely massive. And he starts to control this off stage. 8-Bit Man able to get back somehow. Yeah, amazing recovery there. He even threw out the up air, which kind of exposed him a little bit, but he went right to the ledge afterwards, saved himself. 175 on the Rob, but yep, great job by Mystery clearing out that stock. That was dangerous. He was on the verge of getting two stock. You know what I mean? One back throw off stage into a read. We're moving on to game five. But instead, what we're seeing is the last stock situation in game four, forward air. That's what I'm talking about with the grab game. I think he heard, did he hear us the commentary? It's just, it's so good, dude. It's so strong. People don't talk about it enough. I'm, I'm here to talk about it, Dak. You're talking about it, man. You're the spokesman for Rob Grab today. And I'm all about it. You know, and I got on, on the east side. I got. I definitely compliment. I mean, the fact that he's timing his back airs really well because he's doing it when he knows that Ape Man's gonna be throwing the gyro, so he can cover himself on the gyro and go for the back air either neutral or for the kill, which is how he got on that last stock. And now he has the lead as he continues to keep Ape Man in the court, even with that platform. He just continues to run in. He's getting roasted a little bit here, but the back air comes through, and just for all that work again takes control of the stage Ooh, going down though 8-bit man you got to give him a lot of credit he's living for a long time earlier in this set he might have already lost that last knock down throw what's new up tilt oh, jumping away no jump though gotta be careful here oh that might be it yeah oh, the gyro it. yeah that's not, not be... a jump nope that's it well placed and we're going to a game five Game he five, played he, he played mad after that yep. first stock was dropped i was like this is looking like curtains this is looking like a game four gg for mr e Ape Man heated up though, real quick. Turned on, turned on the gas. Is that what it is? Yeah, there you go. He did something. <laughs> turned on the heat. <laughs> Heating up for sure. Um, a lot of it too. I think he was just sniping Mr. E's jumps really well. Um, mm -hmm. some small lasers were getting in the action and just extending his advantage state really, really well. And the last part is too. He was able to recover. In other games, he was getting pinged off the stage, air dodging late to miss the tech, all these different things, and dropping stocks early with Rob really hurts the character. I mean, it hurts anyone, obviously, but when you're heavy and you really need to rely on you know, some of that rage and capitalize with it, especially the side B, you got to hold on to those stocks with Rob. So 8 Man did a great job recovering there and mixing it up, and I think Kalos helped him out a lot there. I'd be surprised if Mr. E went back, honestly. Definitely agreed on, on both accounts. I think a big thing of it, too, was that I didn't notice a single time that last game, 8-Bit Man throwing out a side B that got easily punished in neutral or like a forward smash on Mystery Shield that gets easily punished. Like those kind of mistakes earlier in the set that 8-Bit Man was making were costly. I don't think I saw like any of that really at all in that last game. Correct me if I'm wrong. So like that, that kind of just add, those little things add up for sure. And if you're not whiffing those side Bs, those big opportunities where he can land a meaty forward air, just get a string going, something like that very easily. Uh, you know, not having that happen to you in a game four, I think that definitely contributed to his win. Absolutely, man. We're coming down to a game five as well. It's been, big. It's been so back and forth. And I feel like Mr. E had the advantage in terms of uh, momentum coming around the last two games, but I think it's all Mr. Ape-Bit Man right now. But mm -hmm. the good thing about game five for Mr. E is he does have the counter pick advantage. We're going to go to a small stage. Smashville is going to be the final final stage for this game deck. Loser goes to the loser's bracket. Winner goes on to face Fargo and winners. So game on. You love to see it, man. First set of the day and we get a game five. So I, I couldn't yeah. be happy. <laughs>
That's great. I mean, especially these two guys, man. They're so explosive. And they play like with you're a talking, lot of passion. Yeah, like you're talking about, they were, you know, potentially opposing teams in that future crew battle. This could be, yeah. you know, is this kind of indicative of how that's going to go? And honestly, it might, because I would expect that crew battle to be close. And this is close. So. Yeah. It's essentially the annual conversation of Tri-State versus <laughs> X-Region, like who would win, you know? It has it's, to happen. It's, always, it's, a, it's a hypothetical. And I, honestly, I, I've been praising Georgia for a long time. I'm happy they're in the mix now. Ooh. And Florida's obviously been one of the best states in Smash. As you can see, one of the premier route players taking the first stock in this game five with that down smash. Very clean stuff. Yeah, no tech gets the down smash right off that down tilt. Mr. E gets back just in time, has control of the gyro. These up airs are getting a bit stale. Not gonna be able to kill with those anytime soon, despite the 12 last zones of Smashville. Not gonna be able to get through with that down air either. 8-Bit Man is really trying to shark here with the up air, but keeping himself safe just long enough to get grabbed. Mr. E continues to keep him over towards his blast zone, but unable to confirm anything into a kill. This is a huge moment in the game five, Dak. You got 176 on the rob. Uh, Mr. E's got to clean up the stock and clean it yeah, up. Yeah, he does. He's leading a lot. 74 already. He's in depth percentage, honestly, to, to good read, but moving around that up. That was scary. Stuff. Yeah, that was super brave. Great placement there. The back air, just enough power on that to take out the rock, which is crazy because he's at 180 center stage, but it is yeah. Smashville, so that's going to do it. Oh, goodness. He's not afraid to up smash. I like that a lot about Ape Man. Not avoid or can't avoid that one. That's a lot of damage. Ooh. But I mean, Mr. E is bringing, I mean, He's still up by a, a solid amount of damage, but a lot of percent is, you know, between them. But he's brought it back for sure. He definitely yeah. has to be careful these up smashes, these down airs that Ape Man is... ...run out. Oof, but he's now looking for these options, trying to get this kill as quickly as he can. That Ooh, down smash is going to do it. Yeah, Ape Man, I, can't, I respect... I respect his ability to just keep going for it. He went for the kill so many times and it finally worked out, but now with the up smash he's looked for a lot of times. It was the down smash actually, so good mix up there. Ape at Man on the Verge, making this comeback happen, Dak. And he's not a able to- of games before. Yeah, he's not able to get too much done, you know, work done against Ape Man off stage. He does get control of the gyro. What's he do with it on stage? Thrown right at the Ooh. shield. Ooh, Ooh. One hit and then again, the back air is not going to confirm. Avoiding it as Ape Man as he tries to get back on stage. I mean, super slippery. Oh, and that up B, that could have been a huge, huge mistake there for Mystery if Ape Man was able to punish, but he just gets away with his life. Oh, he caught that too? That was nasty. Look at he's back on the stage. And he got a gyro oh, into cool. a confirm. That was disgusting. That was simply amazing. And that's the turnaround that you want to see from someone like Ape Man. Another Almost upset. getting the roll too. That would have been, that was a ridiculous sequence from, from Ape Man. Mystery Only would have been better if he gets the kill. up smash. <gasps> oh. Ape Bit Man's weakness. The on stage tech! <laughs> gotta do it! Or the against the stage tech. Here we go. There? Not enough. Has a gyro, throws it down. Way too early. Ooh. Gets back up with the get up attack. Has middle stage control here. The laser keeping him at bay. Ape Bit Man could get this with a two stock. Mr. E needs to get uh -oh. this done yesterday. Finally gets the Nair, the Tipper Nair. But still, what a huge mountain to climb here for Mr. E. Oh, I don't know. We got Lucina on Smashville. This could be anyone's game. Keep it, man. The pressure. Amazing laser. That was actually enormous, because look where Mr. E is now. He's forced to go to the ledge. That's a grab. Down, no, down throw. Yep, he's going to do it. it. Up air? Yes, sir. That should do it. That is going to be man. it. Clutch, dude. Ooh. It's so funny. We started talking about the grabs. And suddenly, they really came <laughs> into play there. A couple things came into play for Ape Man. First off, great turnaround in the set, for sure. He was, you know, it was looking bad for him, especially coming around to that game three. Um, was missing his techs off stage, couldn't really recover well. Mr. E was looking like an all-star off stage, as he can, for sure. He definitely has that capability. But amazing job, Ape Man, adjusting his recoveries, but also getting the KOs. A lot of down throws into either up smash or up air or whatever, what have you. Getting the KOs before Mr. E can. So, really good job, uh, Ape Man. That was not an easy step to come back from. Had to dig deep. Definitely. You know, the switches over to Kalos and, you know, FD, those definitely were, I mean huge players there but then his adaptability then make it work on smashville right the dichotomy between those two stage sizes absolutely huge and coming back i just said from the depth down to one that was big uh and honestly props to both players because they put on a hell of an entertaining set of course that does mean though that 8-bit man is gonna be moving on to face spargo in winter semis or i believe mr e is moving on to uh or falling down to the lower bracket to face cobra in the second round of the lower bracket of top 16. So still, of course, alive, but will be, uh, you know, 
has to prove himself a little more to try and make it back to at least Grant. For sure, man. Let's look at this bracket that we got going on right now. So the top part of the bracket, we had Omar, really good snake player. I was watching him play yesterday, actually. Going against Dark Falcon, who's a Richter. I actually like that matchup. I think it's pretty fun. Like, I don't think it's <laughs> great for uh, for viewership. or, or I, I like it as a commentator, obviously. I'm a little biased, though. But we do have, obviously, Dark Falcon. He plays as Richter and as Captain Falcon. Yep. And then we also have, uh, he was able to take that down against Omar. That was 3-2, by the way. Good set. Um, I think that matchup's fun, honestly. A lot of item control, a lot of stage control, a lot of projectile, like, kind of warfare, tempo control. It's very fun. Then we have uh, Kira Rash taking it over Super Girl Kels. He won that 3-1, actually. Well, Luigi's have taken over today, Dag, that's for sure, in this gombo bracket. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's true. And also, interesting uh, note about that. I'm pretty sure that uh, Kira and uh, Kia and, and Super Girl Kels were 2-2 two two going into that set, so that was kind oh, wow. of like a rubber match. Uh, for them, they were two or two before that, so that was that was a big set. I kind of wish we had, we had seen that too. No, I guess maybe um, character-wise, I'm not sure if everybody would agree, <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely a hype set and a pretty you know, important one, match history-wise between the two players. Yeah, and a three-one is, is pretty solid too. I don't know how close the games were or anything. I'll obviously, have to catch the odds or something later, but keep it on going, keep on going on. Get the bracket. Look at that zoom in. Look at that. The gobbles been so good all day. Man, we've had a blast. Great commentary yeah. on the EU block. Great smash action. Great production. What else could you really ask for? But um, Cobra over Sten. It looks like Best Nest uh, have been playing Palu for that matchup. Mm -hmm. And then we got Wadi and Mabel as well. W Wadi against Mabel. I think that one went just the year. I think Mabel at least took a game. At least Mabel. That was a three. Very very good. Yeah, Wadi yeah. Mabel was three Ooh. two. Um, also, I think that's the first time that Wadi has, has beaten Mabel ever if, or recently, but I think that might, because last time I checked, Mabel ha has some wins over over Wadi, but I'm sure Wadi might have some wins over Wadi. Mabel as well, but I think recently Mabel has, has gotten some Ws over Wadi, so, so that's definitely, and you can see it was a 3-2 set, so we well, can't see that on the screen, we can see that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so big win. Have we got another Doc? Going up against Supergirl Kelson up 2-0. Oh, what the heck? Oh, Capitan Cito, who actually, I, I, I've i seen them. They were playing um, me Gunner early in the bracket what? and is playing me Gunner against Supergirl Kells right now against uh, okay. her Sonic. So, so me Gunner, Dr. Mario, um, I believe he's top three in the Dominican Republic. So uh, he might be either two or three in the Dominican Republic. Um, so yeah, so he's he's definitely a player that I'm, I'm looking at. He's only lost to Angel so far. And uh, a me gunner Dr. Mario this far is is pretty two Dr. Mario's really yeah. <laughs> not a while. What else can you say, man? So we're gonna take a quick break, guys. Don't go anywhere. We just laid out the whole bracket for you. How could you wanna leave? But check out these ads and uh we'll be right back. Yo, what's going on guys? Hi guys, I'm Zane. I'm joined here by none. <laughs> Throwing. It's not even that he's in low tier, it's just his face. Like, ooh. Oh, he's like, ah! No, he's going to camp you! Woo! No. <laughs> you just got bonded. Oh, my God. I love you, man. I love you, too, too. I love you, man. I love you, man. Don't get grabbed. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Things are really heating up. Showtime. Listening to your players, who knew? Who knew? Just a recipe for right. success. 
so when you burst, um, you regain your air rush and your wall jump. Rain's gonna need to end it right oh here. Oh my god, he got it! Welcome back, gamers, to Get On My Line 2021, brought to you and powered by Red Bull. I am Dak, still alongside my man Hazmat, as we continue through the top 16 of the Gum Online Smash Ultimate Singles Bracket. We just had a hype set between Mr. E and 8-Bit Man, where 8-Bit Man came out on top 3-2, to two, and now we're continuing through the winner's side. Matt, are you ready to get into this next match? Dude, I am, and it's so funny, because Red Bull... I wasn't even sure if I was commentating Gamble online. Like, I, you know, I had an idea. Same. I love commentating Gamble, you know, yeah, you know, especially you. <laughs> but just one day, like, about a week and a half ago, in case of Red Bull shows up at my house, I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, I guess okay. <laughs> Probably Gamble. Like, they always do that. So they hooked me up, man. Yeah, true. I already drank all the Red Bull to get me through like, the last couple of weeks. But thanks, Red Bull. It's been a great time, obviously. Gamble, one of my favorite events, online, offline. Uh, yeah, just a great time, man. We're going to have an amazing set coming up. Actually, this should be really, really good. Really volatile mm -hmm. matchup. Dark Falcon, New York City. Uh, I think he's from. I think it was Brooklyn. Is that Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn. Okay, it's dope. Yeah, it's this is. Be... This is Go hype. On. Yeah, Dark Falcon versus Kia Rash from Brooklyn. Unranked from Brooklyn. Let's go. Let's oh, go. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I saw him over quarantine like quite a bit. So, um, he's got Richter obviously going against uh, Luigi, and this is an interesting matchup because it's pretty heavily hated by Luigi. Um, obviously, Richter has the ability to just zone out and stay away. Uh, from Luigi and avoid that pesky grab in the zero. I say pesky, but it's really a deadly thing that is going on. Not only that, but if you get the grab at the wrong time and the, the cross is coming back, you can interrupt your stuff. There's just so much that Richter can do to throw off Luigi's um, best part of his gameplay, as you can see. Just keeping uh, Kia Rash at that whip flank. So good. Dude, I I'm sorry that I cut you off a little bit at the beginning, but I'm just very happy to see more New York players. <laughs> like, obviously, you saw Mystery. That's my boy right there. I'm a little biased, but love to see. My man, you know, I honestly, this is the first time seeing Dark Falcon, so I'm not gonna say my man, but from Brooklyn, from New York, very excited. I think this is probably one of his farthest runs in a major tournament like this, so this, that's pretty huge. I'd love to see him continue to go farther, and against Pierre, who is obviously four. Here we go at the ledge, pressure. That holy water lining everything up. Missing the forward smash, though, okay. 
That is one thing, like, everyone talks about Belmonts and how much better they are online. I do think there are certain aspects of their gameplay that is better online, like getting around their whole barrage uh, projectiles, all this rinse and repeat you're seeing at the ledge. But their confirms are still tight, and hitting those online and hit confirming them is really tough, so kind of a give and a take with them in terms of how much better they are online or not. Absolutely. Definitely a double-edged sword for them, but mm -hmm. for now, uh, certainly an advantage, a slight one. Getting back on stage, able to do something. Kia really hasn't been able to land anything in sort of a grab. Any of these fireballs are really just like for zoning and a little bit of damage, not really to confirm anything at this point. Even just going for that standing grab far out of range, the down tilt from Dark Falcon can get him some stage affordability here. But again, I mean, this getting, how do you, I, dude, how, what do you do in the corner against that? I don't know what to do against that. I got, with worse characters like Ridley, <laughs> Luigi's way better, so I have no idea. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a tough one for sure. I don't think Luigi has too much, he, like, anything special about Luigi that can help him. He might try to recover high or something, but he's so slow at, when, on his recovery path. I don't even think that's going to be a realistic option, so I think he's just going to have to keep getting off the ledge and, and stay uh, as vigilant as he can, man. And yeah. I'm thinking almost like, what is he thinking for a counter pick here if it doesn't go his way, right? Like, you know, is he looking probably for a, a bigger stage so it's less likely he's on the ledge? I'm not entirely sure. So you're talking different character, to be honest with you. We'll get yeah, maybe, axe, yeah. Dropping out the green missile. I feel like you gotta have something for this. Definitely no elegant hate of this matchup. And I mean, you can see how rough it is for Luigi, honestly. Very rare I feel bad for this character, Luigi, because of how he's built in this game. But I definitely do in this matchup. He definitely has a hard time. But here we go. Key Rash on the board. He's one grab away from being ahead. So that's well, that's cool. the thing, yeah. Once, as long as Luigi's <laughs> on the board, he's in the game, right? It doesn't matter what he has yeah. on the board. As long as he's on the board, he's going to be back in it. One one grab really can make a difference, as you all know. So it's going to be up to Dark Falcon to make sure that grab opportunity doesn't come through. Um, I'm still very surprised the first time I've seen Dark Falcon play. I definitely sleep around this guy, but happy to see him make this far. Doing really well against Kira right now. Obviously, talking is certainly a matchup uh, dependent for sure, but against, you know, a character that's so volatile and that's scary in close quarters against Luigi, he's very, staying very calm and playing really well. Pressure at the ledge here. We're gonna catch him jumping. Nice job. I like that by Akira Rash. You get your feet off the ground in off the ledge, and Belmont's trying to catch you getting nervous. Jumping a lot, moving in, uh, instantly. Akira Rash just threw a fireball. I like that. Trying to create a little space for himself. He's, he's definitely learning a lot about the matchup as he goes. Or, or trying to figure out Dark Falcon's, like, pacing as he plays the matchup, so. Up air? Oh, oh yeah, beat. Okay, I like it a lot. It's an easier confirm. Up air's hard from tipper, so getting the up B there at high enough percentage, it's gonna work, Deck. Yeah. And Kira is now a <laughs> up a up a river without up a river without a paddle at this point. And certainly a huge advantage for Dark Falcon playing really well, even in the corner. I mean, though Kira, I mean, Kira gets it. It's not gonna be enough, low percent, but does get that grab, and all of a sudden, a much closer game. And Kia has been doing a very, very solid job of staying alongside Dark Falcon and keeping pace, despite seemingly really not having control of this game whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're seeing these fireballs from, from Kia Rash. Create some good space for him. Look at that, he got all the way over there, he's got the holy water. Okay, you could jump away and just use the whip of the vampire killer, man. The range on that move is ridiculous. Oh, he's looking for the ender. He's looking for the down air into, into come back cross into up B, the classic, the day one. Good job by Kier, actually. Trying to get that holy water out, because that's really where you can try to get his timing back out. So he's trying to mix up his recovery with the fireball a little bit, the mix with bottle throw. But look at it that. It. It's hit by the glass to the dome. Ooh, it's so deep. funny because he's throwing these huge axes at you whipping you you know just doing all this crazy stuff and then what does you win you hit with the bottle well, that's just enough baptized. to get rid of luigi that's so scary for luigi man uh you get baptized from a football field away <laughs> it's, like, it's like that pic that pandemic picture of like the priest like like with the water gun spraying a baby right there like it's essentially uh. the equivalent <laughs> it's gonna make sure guys done yeah, Dude, he definitely. had some great, great axes off stage too to, to collide with the green missile and just force a bad recovery. Like it's just a bad spot to be in. So I give Dark Falcon a lot of credit. Um, like we said, this is definitely one of Luigi's roughest matchups in my opinion, for sure. Um, I think like a big thing too is that what kind of crushes the Belmonts is the ability for a character to go off stage and take their stocks early. Mm -hmm. That's not in Luigi's wheelhouse really. You know, he, he probably could against the Belmont, but it's so committal that if the Belmont gets around you after the fact, now you're in a bad position against them again. It's just the advantage state is so precious for Luigi in this matchup. I don't know, going off stage yeah. is rough. I mean, I guess you can go for the down B, but they have some angles that go around, and, and Dark Falcon has some good recoveries under his belt for sure.
Definitely. And, and it was, you know, a lot of that thing, like you're playing off stage against Richter where you really don't have any good tools to get back. Uh, the fireballs really weren't landing many confirms at all for Kiarash. So that was, you, know, you can see now with Kal Kalos, he has way more room to start hitting that B button. That's definitely going to be looking for for sure. I mean, now has some kind of uh, more of an even playing field here and can also really push back to those platforms where he could certainly look for some, you know, down B cheese for a grab there as well. So, you know, that's some options that weren't op weren't open to Kier Rash in the previous game. Yeah, we got to give Dark Falcon some credit too. I mean, I was complimenting Kier Rash on those good fireballs from Luigi. The Vampire Killer eats through those though, and you see a lot more boosted F tilt uh, coming out from Dark Falcon too, because he knows if he F tilts through them, it's going to beat the fireball and hit Luigi too. And I'm telling you, man, this is just a rough one. Richter has the answers to Luigi for sure. I think it's also because we're in some kind of like church. I don't know what this is, this building, but I think that might be some kind of buff. <laughs> this is from Kingdom Hearts, right? Is this yeah, from Kingdom Hearts yeah, it one? is. Yeah, this is it. This so. is as close as you're going to get, chat. This is it for Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> the end. It's not happening. Get him out of here. Yeah, you said it, not me. Oh, I agree. It's over, bro. It's over. You know that. Master Chief, what's up? Oh, you're true, man. I need Chief. <laughs> he needs to finish the fight. I need it. <laughs> Off stage, let's see what Kirash could do. Nice, good air dodge there too. See, Luigi just, he can obviously hit Richter off stage, but he has to kind of commit pretty hard to one direction or the other. He just, I don't know, man, it's a tough matchup overall. Oh, I, I'm so scared every time that like deep long range ax comes out, like I'm waiting for it to hit the Luigi rocket right there. Like just mm -hmm. very, I mean, that's the thing. Luigi can really barely mix up his recovery without like giving Richter an opportunity to just throw something at him. So really can't waste any time. Air dodge in, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's gonna do it though. Yep, there it goes. Oh, no. Nice shot with the plunger. Very nice. Kirash, very resourceful. Okay. Kirash making this matchup with Godlike. He's doing really well. Good adjustments in this game too so far, Dak. Oof, that roll gonna get punished though, and like that shield is so low. Any poke will work here. And using those fireballs, using the grab, I mean, I like how Kirash is not even just using like the plunger, like just to grab, but just the spacing tool as well, like just to stop something or anything to kind of keep his, you know, front yard kind of occupied with projectiles to some extent, some disjoints against Richter. Mm -hmm. You see right there, like getting a little bit of, just that little tap can be enough to try to swing momentum his way. Mm -hmm. So far doing a great job. I mean, he hasn't lost a stock yet either. This could be a big edge guard situation though. Setting up shop. F tilt, yep, nice and easy. All right, there you go. Angle forward air going through the fire. That's what I'm talking about, is the whip going through projectiles is gonna be huge in this matchup. You kind of see too, the adjustment from Dark Falcon is, look, give me this big stage, you're throwing <laughs> fireballs and controlling the bottom platform. I'm gonna go to oh. this high platform and throw projectiles down at you, mainly the holy water, you know what I mean? Cross is coming, holy water's coming. You only have one projectile, I have like 17, you know? Our father oh, was no. moving there. Oh, but he gets stumped again. Didn't go to trade school. Get hit by that plunger a second time. <laughs> well, right back with him. Yeah, I was going to say that. That's, and again, that holy water might be enough to just get barely past the axe. Mm -hmm. Kirash has done a good job uh, mixing up his jumps, too. Like, just getting out of the corner, uh, out of the holy water, and the cross pressure that he had. Uh-oh, he doesn't have a jump, dude. This is really dangerous. He had the air dodge in. That was a good job. I think Dark Take the damage to a hold on the stock. Yeah, I think Dark Falcon thinking that, that dash attack Luigi is a little more punishable than it is. <laughs> and uh, gonna get back very, very low recovery. Kirash gets back though. I want to chat said, yo, is this a shout out to them? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the chart? All right, all right, all right. All right, chat. Right. Right, <laughs> Bring up the chart. <laughs> a bear, oh, a B, nice, good confirm. That's a dragon punch enough, right though. there. I, honestly, all right, all right, <laughs> all right, chill, chill, chill. Luigi's more of a Shoto. Never mind. All right, we're done. We're Luigi done. is oh. definitely more of a Shoto than. Uh, than no, I'll, I'll, absolutely. I won't absolutely. die. I won't die on that hill, but I will look at it from far. Kirash again, just dash attacking his way out there. Just derailed the whole conversation, oh. dude. Like it's over. He plunged it. The dash attack yep. again. Oh, but that upbeat. Oh, Ooh. nice the mix up. Doesn't let the platform, but Dark Falcon sniffs it out, gets the back air, and now even up on stocks, but a considerable lead here for Kiarash. Right. right, nice reaching over. Dude, this is not over for sure. Like, I know Kiarash, no, he's not. got a good lead here, but this is going to be really tough. Oh, could have been big damage. That could have been a whip and a cross into a follow up. Wait, hesitated to pull the trigger. That's I'm telling you, man, these characters are they're execution happy, man. You miss kills with the Belmonts, you really feel it. Off stage, though, gonna have to recover. Kirash has been so good off stage. Yep, that's gonna do it. Very nice. We Very said. Clean.
Oof. We said that it could be um, the big thing that Kia Rash needs to do, and it's tough for Luigi in this matchup, can be tough for him, is finding the off offstage kills against Richter. Able to find them that game, taking it down, bringing, it to us, bringing us to a 1-1 in a very volatile matchup like we said, Dak. Absolutely. And that was a great uh, comeback there and, and readjustment by Kia Rash, right? Maybe the, I'm not sure what connection he has, right? But you know, the download taking a little bit longer. Obviously, the Kalos switch definitely worked out. But I like that he worked. I mean, it was the, the switch allowed him to work the fireball and the plunger in more as a neutral tool to kind of stuff more of Dark Falcon's options that he was using to confirm or otherwise just, you know, zone out Luigi. Once he started to work those tools in, it gave him a lot more breathing room. The problem is that he's not going to be able to go to Kalos every single game. So, you know, how how much room is he going to have on uh, upcoming stages? Looks like we're going to be having not as much room, but, I, I you know, I would say that that switch definitely was huge in giving Kirash some opportunities to fall out their plunger out a little more. Plunger was big, man. Plunger literally took the first stock of that match. You know what yeah. I mean? It was off stage, the presence. It, it lingers for so long, and that's the thing with the Belmonts. Is like, it doesn't take a whole lot to kill them off stage. Not not even a little bit. Like Plunger's going to do the job very nicely. So, Game three coming up. Counter pick for Dark Falcons, Richter. Just to try to make the Town of City work out for him. So, so as a, uh, a very good man, man, I mean, what do you think about this? Going here to Town and City. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. Look at the platform layout. Look at all the space that he's controlling right now. You know what I mean? Kirash is going to have to deal with this barrage of projectiles with Luigi, which is not... I mean, he can't really move. He can kill you one crab. He can't move too, too well, though. Here we go. This is going to be a lot of projectile warfare. Try to bait out lazy... I'm going to say it. It's like lazy fireballs. We're just throwing them out. And if they get red, the downward angle whip is going to do it. There you go. Catching his jump, too. Oh, the accidental little axe the wrong way. A couple miscues oh. here. Looking for the forward smash. Trying to catch a neutral get up. Didn't work out though. But so far, the stage is looking good. And honestly, great job by Dark Falcon. He had the pressure on the entire time during the first transformation. Then when the platforms left, went away, he kept Kirash on the, in the corner the entire time. And the second this transformation came over, he backed up because he knew those platforms over the ledge gave Luigi a bit more opportunity at the corner. So great job by Kirash. Just kind of move and groove through these transitions and continuing to hold on to this game. The ledge. Oh, the axe does connect. Oh, the Kirash was. Oh, he does have an air dodge. Yep. Yeah. Be punished. Trapping here. Oh, he, oh, the fireball blocked him actually from the follow up. That was great. I'm telling you, these fireballs are huge. Whipping a grab. This could be a stock. Look at the turnaround forward arrow. It was so good. Poking through. Can't find any pay dirt there. Is here as a dark falcon against Kirash's shield, but that shield is getting low. Has to be careful. Has to start the rounds. Oh, Gap really risking it all and gets uh, hit back on the last one. Now finds up in the corner once again. But Kirash has been Ooh. doing a lot better getting out that up B almost could have done it. And the up flanks are crazy. Too. Yeah. No, two flanks right there on the forward tilts from Richter. Man, I'm pretty sure those Ooh. backers would have killed Kirash though. Going for the parries and getting a back air. Playing incredible right now. 170, man. Belmont's low key. You know how to play around their main game plan? They do have a little bit of a problem killing. They definitely can. Okay, there you go. Okay. Gonna, you're gonna get put in the cage right there. It's gonna be hard getting out. Evened up now. Here, Ash, but again, wasting no time, no hesitation to start rallying with some damage and getting a lot of these close quarters hit. Dark Falcon has to be careful, not getting, you know, uh, committing too hard to these close quarters is exactly what Kia Rash wants. Start conditioning him to these close jabs, uh -oh. tilts to go for the grab. There you go. The mix up on the recovery too. Thing with Gregor sometimes you gotta go over the ledge with the up B. Sometimes you know they're gonna get aggressive, defend yourself with it. A lot of good ways to mix up that move. The recovery's still bad, but if you can mix it up well enough, that, that's all that matters. Jeez, what an air dodge. Oh. The extension Ooh. with the plunger keeps him in the corner, gets the grab. Is it gonna do it with the platform there? Can't get the follow-up. Dark Falcon easily jumps away, but I like the I like the look and the dash attack catches the tech as well. And then goes for the corner, continues to pile it on and gets Dark Falcon to his last stock. Yeah, I think that was just huge. And we said it, Dak. I mean, we kind of called it. Kia Rash is going to have to go off stage and make some stuff happen. He's not getting the grabs. He's not getting the conventional Luigi kills. But he can get them off stage against Richter. That's just that's just how bad the recovery is for character. So Dark Falcon's doing up smash. Oh, he mistimed it. Oh, man, I love that confirm. That's too bad. It's a classic. Holy Water's been getting, I don't know if you caught that. It got thrown between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Kia Rash caught it, and then Dark Falcon caught it back. Kier Ash on that second stock, trying to get a little bit of extra credit, but so far that grade not going up too much. You're only at 19.6%. I feel like people don't talk about the decimals enough. <laughs> dash attack. They're finally here, Dak. Uh-oh, yeah, up right? early. <laughs> Air dodge? Yeah. I don't know if he 
I don't know if he had to air dodge there or not, but I, I like that he went for it, but it was going to be a layup for, for Kia Roush, who's hit those down airs, you know, on smaller characters uh, mm-hmm. throughout his career playing ultimate. So, or a nice job. Like we said, the offstage play Dak really coming to life here. The thing is, is I feel like there are some options from Belmont um, that Dark Falcon is using that can just get punished heavy from Luigi. Uh, including like down till missed whiff grabs dash attack kind of started that one off too like there's just a couple options where luigi shouldn't be able to catch you because you have the whip if you keep him out with it that's great but if you don't and you use other options that get punished you're going to be in for a lot of trouble here so kirash playing the matchup exceptionally exceptionally well let's see what dark falcon does uh on the retaliation here he definitely could make this reverse happen but he's got to make his his win he's got to have a win first on his counter pick though and no surprise, looks like Battlefield and Smashville were the bands here for Dark Falcon. So we're going back to town and city. Back to town. Uh, this, I still think this is going to go either way, but uh, I'm sorry, Kirash with the, with the bands for those two, Smashville and Battlefield. Yeah. So Dark Falcon already stacking it up, though. Keeping it going. Nice, uh, clean 61% untouched, unanswered until finally the fireball gets in there. But already, yeah, they're keeping Kirash in the corner. Kirash is clearly at this point, figure out how to get from the ledge. But so far on this stock, I mean, Dark Falcon is, you know, got a little rhythm. Yeah, so much of it is just your timing and, and recognizing where the cross is, where the projectiles are, what's it's safe to move. It's like red light, green light. You know, like, when can I move? When can I? And then Richter yeah. catches me going, uh-oh. Okay, good, okay. The instant, I like that. You didn't even give him a chance to, to attack him off stage. It was smart. And you're definitely right, though. Like, in this matchup, for sure, you got to know, like, when's it my turn? When's it, when's it Richter's turn? Like. What if they, what's the arsenal like right now? And, and that's definitely something you gotta be mindful of. And Kirash so far has done a, a pretty good job in this set of doing that, especially in the latter games. But on this stock, Dark Falcon, at, the, at least from the get-go, took a huge advantage. But now, on landing, is getting grabbed a lot here and getting caught up by these dash attacks. Almost gets caught again. And the forward airs have also Ooh. been huge too for Kirash to poke as Dark Falcon jumps. Starts with the ledge again. Kirash oh, has been no. so good at avoiding it, but that axe, great timing. I like the holy water there too to say, hey, if you roll, I'm gonna cash in on that too. So great option coverage there. Open up Kirash. First time in a while too, so Dark Falcon making the adjustments he needs. And Dark Falcon not looking to drop to the lower bracket. Trying to keep that combo winner side run alive and stays alive against that down B. Gonna air dodge right to the up smash. Kirash is waiting for it. Now gonna be tied up to a piece. Pull down the center stage, though. It's looking good. The percentage lead. Uh-oh, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, no. Belmont's terrible disadvantage state. Luigi's going to have a hard time landing that grab, but when he does, it is going to be uh, an explosion. That's for sure. It's going to be a stock. Belmont's just, man, they got to they eat it sometimes in the disadvantage, dude. It is what it is. I mean, it definitely props to Dark Falcon. I think it's the first time that Kirash has landed that, uh, you know, to get the kill. I think he's landed a couple other times, but didn't get it. So Dark Falcon still doing a good job, not getting grabbed overall, but really the plunger, like like we've been saying, has been such a problem for Dark Falcon. And he's been getting caught out neutral, getting punished by some of these fireballs, the plunger for sure, especially off stage. Kirash at high percent can definitely be killed by almost anything at this point, but somehow makes it in, gets the nair to give him a little room. Might be looking for the forward air, but gets stuffed and finds himself on the other corner, still in some trouble. Unable to get the KO there, though. I think a downward angle fair might have done it. Either way, the runes are feeding. It's not over yet. Still in a good position here. Dark Falcon looking to get the KO. Catching the jump. Yep, instantly jumping out that time and covering it. Very nice. He's right back in it now, Dag. That's what we're saying. Oh, no. Gets caught by that dash attack, though, and now it's definitely a kill percent. But here, Ash. Might be knocking him out of this grab percent range now, so that might actually work to Dark Falcon's favor. Now has maybe a little more uh, margin for error here as they go into the later half of this uh, stock. Lands the holy water, but still being careful. Knows how much is on the line uh -oh. and trying to poke, but gets forced into the corner once again. And that down to almost gets punished. You called out earlier. Here, Ash just laid on the look. Good air dodge there, too. I'm telling you, man, he's fixing up the... the not just the timing, but the defensive options he's choosing to. Between Tornado, Nair, and, and Air Dodge, I think Luigi has a lot of deep, like good options. Uh, double jump, obviously, into the standard ones that do nothing to the classic. Oh, okay, gets the grab. The back air. Oh, God. Oh, the get him out of here. The I'm late for dinner DI. <laughs> See you into the blast zone. <laughs> Gonna be holding the way, trying to get away from the Luigi, the classic, and then the back air just ejects you right into the blast zone because you're holding towards it. So. Great set, though, I got to say. Key Rash really impressed me there, uh, playing that matchup nearly perfectly on the side of Luigi. Um, Dark Falcon, though, obviously, a player I've been watching for a little while. I think he's fantastic. 
uh, just ran into a player, man, who was, who was ready for the matchup, made the adjustments he needed to make. So very nice job by Key Rash there, taking that one down 3-1 over Dark Falcons Richter. Uh, very good stuff. So actually, uh, that puts Kia into winner's final. Yep. Very nice stuff there. Uh, yeah. He beat Supergirl Kels 3-1, and then he just beat Dark Falcon 3-1. So really, really good stuff, man. Those are two not very easy matchups, I feel like, for Luigi, Sonic, and uh, Richter. They just have the ability to kind of keep Luigi out, which he does not like dealing with. So um, he also might be playing against... <laughs> It's going to either be Rob or Cloud so, yeah. or Sephiroth <laughs> from Spargo, which I don't think is any better. So It's going to be one of those characters. So he's he's got to be used to this lifestyle at this point. He's found, found so much success with Luigi, but good stuff to him, man, taking down that matchup. That is not easy. Certainly, and and Dark Falcon, definitely nothing to be ashamed of for sure. Great play, and honestly, like I said, this is the first time that I saw Dark Falcon play, so I was really happy to see him play really well against the player who's certainly a favorite in this bracket. And that will mean that Dark Falcon is now waiting for the winner of Mr. E versus Wadi in Losers Quarters. Oof. So we might see, so maybe not the two of us, we might see some Dark Falcon later on in the bracket. Um, you know, New York still lives, lives on. But yeah, Kirash will come up on top, as you said, playing the winner of Spargo versus 8 Bit Man. Yep. Mr. E, yeah, Mr. E Wadi and Losers. Uh, uh, Capitancito. Uh, is still winning. Actually, me Gunner, it looks like so far. Six wins, uh, six game wins. I dropped a game, but or, or they dropped a game. Six wins uh, in loser so far with me Gunner, which is insane. Um, Captain Cito, let's see. Mr. E against Wadi. And like you said, the winner of that plays Dark Falcon. So it's going to be a crazy one. I mean, we saw how Wadi <laughs> uh, fared against Dom. I don't know if you caught any of those stats from a little while ago, like a month yeah. or two ago. Great stats, actually. Um, a really fun matchup, I think, Richter versus Rob. It's, it's so polarizing. It's so tough for both of them, I think. It can be just, you know, again, another very volatile matchup. But, yeah. Um, Definitely. I don't know what, ma- don't know what match lo- we're jumping into next here, Dak. Well, I know. think we are going to a quick break here before we okay. get that match set up. So, don't go anywhere, everybody. More GOM Online is coming your way. Oh, no. No break. No break. No break. Oh, no no break. No break. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Break. So, we're getting our next match. That's actually even better. So, no break. We're sticking with Let's it. Go. Um, and I believe it is actually uh mystery versus Wadi. So we're going to be getting Ooh. the mystery versus Wadi match. And then the winner of that will be playing dark Falcon. So perfect. Even better. Oh, even better. Spargo <laughs> eight bit man. I'm getting the best of updates. So we're getting Spargo versus eight bit man. First, the other winner semi match. My apologies. Yeah, we're just keeping you guys on your toes is really what it is. I mean, any of the matches that we could put up would be simply amazing. So, Fargo 8-Bit Man is going to be winner semifinals. 8-Bit Man had a really, really uh, close Game 5 set against Mr. E to get here. Spargo had a Game 5 set against Reggie to get here, which is just, I got to say, a real big compliment to Reggie. Obviously, mm-hmm. Spargo moving on and winning in the bracket, but like I said earlier, Spargo's really good at that matchup and plays characters that can be really tough for Game & Watch. So, really nice job to Reggie almost taking that one down. but. Spargo, even better job getting the W. Yeah. Doesn't matter how you do it, you got it done. Um, it's either gonna be Cloud, Pyra, and Mithra, or Sephiroth against mm-hmm. Rob. I'm kind of thinking maybe it'll start Cloud. I feel like he knows that matchup so well. It's a whole yeah. online thing. He's played it a lot. Well, he's definitely been playing Cloud more, I think, in this bracket too. So I'm I'm thinking that's uh likely where he's gonna go, but uh I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm also not sure if these two have played each other previously before this or even in this bracket i don't think they have uh, actually uh thank you smash data gg uh, they have played each <laughs> other uh online though but spargo has beat uh eight bit man they did face each other at one of the like earlier lunchbox tournaments like a while back and it was a two on win so for yep. for spargo so i wouldn't okay. say that that's really uh really indicative of anything or how this set could really go so considering it wasn't any time recently, I would say, and it was a close set. So uh, definitely yep. looking forward to what these two players have to offer. Yeah, they're both just so great, too. I mean, we saw and something about 8-Bit Man. I mean, we saw in the last set, he's so good at, like, I swear I could see him, like, kicking into high gear and, like, play angry and somehow, like, it just helps him play better, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's one of those people where, like, it's either, it, it's just a double-edged sword. It's like, if he kicks into high gear and starts playing very intensely and very seriously, it's either going to, like, accelerate his gameplay and make it so much better and take it to that next level, or mm-hmm. he might start just kind of swinging around a lot and start getting caught out. So, Spargo, he's not someone you can sleep on, man. He, he causes a lot of problems for you in these brackets, so. It could be tough. Tough oh. opponent here. Oh, <laughs> Old Mario Kart. There's Spargo. There he is, hey. the kid himself. 
That's pretty. That's pretty good roll. Pretty solid roll there. Yeah. Look at that. Yep. Spargo coming through. Spargo, definitely, of course, another one of the uh, the favorites here to come through. Spargo, number one on the Wi-Fi Warriors ranking, B6. Uh, obviously, one of the top players from Mexico. So, definitely a lot on his end. And then Ape Man. I mean, Ape South Man. Florida's South Florida's best, really. Um, there he is. Another solid roll. Great picture. Both great pictures with it. Okay. Really solid. Really solid picture here. You got the, you got, you know, you got the foreground, you know, lighting, but the background blur. You know, that's quintessential esports right there. <laughs> it looks like what is going on in the back. What game do you think that is in the background? Is that man? It looks like, like Yoshi like, Story. I was gonna say or yeah. Dreamland. The Yoshi Story or say, Dreamland. Some tree. Thing. You know what I'm saying? It kind of looks like honestly, it looks like Green Green. If I'm being real for a second. Or Green you know Green. Yeah. Kind of does. I don't think it is obviously, but it could be. Spargo Ape Man. I think there's no where it is coming up. I think you said Spargo number one on the Wi-Fi Warrior uh, PR. I think Cloud's a little stronger um, in that format, but I think Spargo himself has just grown a lot as a player. Um, I think we saw him really start to come to rise and start to do really big things in brackets right before we went off. We went to the. I was gonna say before we went offline, but we actually went <laughs> on before we went online. Right. Um, and then he continued to uh, make strides as a player and do well. So we're gonna see what he could do here against Ape and Man. Said. Yeah. The man and coming in hot after after a tough set. Yeah, Ape Man is uh, like 29th around there on the, on the same okay. Wi-Fi Warrior ranking V6. I think that I, I want to say the seventh one hasn't come out yet. I'm not going to say that I'm the most up to date on the Wi-Fi Warrior <laughs> rankings, but I will. I don't think some of them's yeah. come out yet. So I think that's up to date. But yeah, definitely two players that obviously had, you know, like offline results, but then made that transition into online and continued to do really well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think both these guys will do really well, you know, when Offline is 100 percent back up and off the ground. So yeah, running, hopefully so. soon. Hopefully soon. Hopefully next time, you know, we're getting getting on my line. It's gonna be in person. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna call it? What are we gonna call it anymore? Oh yeah, get on. I don't know. Get off my line. I don't know. I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> get off of online. That's it. <laughs> then we're back. Get off in of person. this tangent, maybe is what we should do. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to for this matchup, and we are jumping right there into it. Go. Thank you so much. As we jump right in. Ooh, oh, the tunes. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anger alert. Jeez. All right, there we go. All right, man. Game one, you already know what it is. Fargo against Ape Man. Like we said, probably going with the cloud. Good so far for Ape Man, though. Uh oh, this is gonna be bad. All right, could have been worse. Oh, what? Oh. The placement, but the awareness of Spargo to charge the limit and make it back. This is so good already. Starting off strong, Dak. Yeah, you love to see it. This is already a banger. They're just throwing hands right now or swords and gyros. Oh, but gets the confirm and the down air spike will do it. But I mean, just like that, I mean, that's all right. That side be a little wild, but a move, something like that could easily go. The up smash almost does it. And now Spargo get back and it cover himself with the down air, but the side need to get around that hitbox. Very well done by Ape Man. Not going to do it as it's filled out. Another one thrown out, really looking for these. Wants to try to get this done. The up air again, not going to be enough. The DI really good from Spargo. Spargo's recoveries and just different ways. Like we talked about kind of, you know, Dark Falcon's ability to recover with Richter, which is really solid. The character with bad recovery. I mean, Cloud notoriously, you don't have good recovery with Cloud. You're going to lose to a uh, high, the top level player, uh, such as Ape Again? Man. But look at that. Oh, attack. Whoa, he tanked? What? He's ready that time. Not a second time. Not a second time. <laughs> you got to learn from the first one. It's funny, too, because you look at Rob and, like, obviously we talk about how good he is and all the advantages he has as a character. His big hurtbox is one of his biggest disadvantages. So characters could just abuse him once they start hitting him. But the thing is, like, we were looking at Lucina last time. Lucina can hit pretty hard, but Cloud? Cloud could just dumpster you <laughs> if he gets that falling up air. We've already seen it twice into the down airs, especially the punish game that Spargo has. Really could just push uh, the numbers up or just take your stocks away, so. Oh. That was a bad situation there. Either you get hit by the aerial, you land on the gyro. The back arrow was connecting just in time. Spargo getting out, but the side B will scoop him. Has the limit, will be able to easily Ooh. avoid that down air and does so. The down air also, or, or, yeah, that down air lands and the up air. So many aerials, but that one's gonna confirm. Ape Man going out of his last stock, but this grab, you've been talking about him. Bringing it out the right time and almost gets that read, but the jump no air dodge was looking for, but Spargo doesn't give it to him. Still staying alive in that second stock. Ooh. This Rob has gotten spiked so many times. Not necessarily for a stock every time, but man, he's hit the stage hard. He's hit the side of the stage. He's hit the blast zone. Everything this Rob has done, he's been getting pushed hard where he's going. Nair, though, for the kill. 
Sparkle, mix it up again. Stage? Okay, I was no. gonna say, I don't think you can make that back. Like, yeah. Sparkle made me a believer. He was like, I got this. Like, the way he was moving, I think he was trying to trick 8 Man into going at him and then dragging him down with the climb hazard second hit. So, good idea from Spargo. Never let up on your stock if you get anything out of it. Oh, that up smash would have been. I was gonna say, <laughs> Spargo going for it. Doesn't get the left smash. Now trying to poke with this back air, but the Nair's the one that does the job. Ape Man gives him a taste of his own medicine as they recover, gets back on, but that limit's ready to go. Might have to worry about that up B at close range. For the back air, it's the up smash though that up Ape Man's trying to cross over on and gets hit by. And now the landing situation's dire. Spargo oh. going for it all the way up top, but uh, wow, <laughs> space jamming it, but doesn't get the kill. <laughs> No fear though, but now he's gotta be he's gotta be scared. He's not gonna get limit probably again. He's either gonna close this game out with a win or a loss before he gets that limit. So tape but man, obviously he's gonna be taking it down. He's really looking for an up smash here. Oh, he rolled in. What a grab though. Fargo. On the hunt here. Dag, this could be either player's game. Oh, okay, I'm still let's get to it. Big heart box. <laughs> are, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. Could no, have been either a... player's game. Really? Def no, oh definitely will, yeah. I would, I would say, you know, uh, it could have gone either way, but yeah, the blade beam at the corner, trying to make him recover low, and then just very simple read on the getup, right? Uh, you, you were looking yeah. for an option that Averman hadn't really thrown up almost at all, right? He'd been recovering from the ledge with Nair a lot, so just kind of looking for almost any other option and called it out very correctly. So Spargo getting that first win. definitely, I definitely agree with you, though. It could have gone either way. Yeah, and I like that he just went with a simple F tilt. You know what I mean? Like, he was trying to get fancy mm -hmm. there at the end, you know, the climb hazard all the way up at the top. Trying to get a little fancy with it, but you know, at the end of the day, if your opponent gets off the ledge, it does that neutral get up in the rob, and you can take it down with an F tilt and you're ready for it. Why not? Just pull the trigger. Hit forward on that C stick if you got tilt stick, which I'm sure he does. I feel like most players do at this point. The common. But what about but you? Anyway, me? You yeah, got tilt I do. stick? Okay. I'm yeah, a tilt stick too. guy, yeah. Richter Richter made me switch. I couldn't I couldn't play Smash Stick Belmont. There's just no way. Yeah, no, I feel you there. Ridley, need those tilts. Are we going to our game number two? We're going to Smashville. So, I mean, not, not much of a change of scenery here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, I gotta say, that was an explosive game one. I really enjoyed that. Because a matchup like this could get slow. You know, if the cloud plays a little scared, he doesn't want to close to rob or anything. Oh, missing that up air. Uh oh, it's big damage. Oof, almost getting the uh, the spike with the legendary grab there. Okay, side B. Oh, okay. Getting up from the ledge. I haven't seen that too often. I like to mix that in every once in a while, I guess. Ava Man now getting control of that gyro. Trying to keep it dribbling there, but it doesn't catch Spargo. Spargo just to the right of it avoids it and still holding on to the limit. Want to make use of it though soon in these next couple seconds, and they lose it instead. Let's go for yeah. the, another recharge when he gets the opportunity. Ooh. Love that idea. I mean, Ape Man has been rolling quite a bit, so I'm surprised he didn't try to turn around, but I think he was just trying to cover the jumper or any scaredy cat option. But here we go at the ledge. It's going to be a lead for Ape Man, actually. Dropping the gyro on his head, taking the stock down. Clean stuff. Man, he is not afraid to throw out those side pieces, too. <laughs> Ape Man throws those out all the time. He has been. I mean, he's been finding success with it, too. You can't really hate him for it. Definitely not. It was the gyro. Just Spargo doing the corner with it. Oh, Ape Man just saute is right by him. Gets in, the down tilt, one hit, but trying to space out with the Nair gets them punished. And now the gyro thrown back and reflected as well as the stock. Now it's 2-2, two, two, just a slight lead. As Ape Man continues to try and stack it up a little bit. Oh, but that charge full limit blade, you can do a lot of damage and keep Ape Man in the air. Yeah, I gotta say, I love, again, it was kind of similar to Mr. E or any story that's good at having an advantage state. Just the movement and the positioning uh, that Spargo has with Cloud. Like, just the, like how far ahead you can see he's thinking about his combo tree and what he's gonna do. But I think that's Death. another stock there. Yes, it is. 8-Bit Man, offstage plays, super clutch stock deck. Love to see it. And, and it's really very little Cloud can do in that situation. Maybe use side B to just mix up recovery, but the Rob can easily just wait it out. So there's very little you can do there without the limit. And now 8-Bit Man just continuing to keep that momentum until finally it's broken with that up B. But 8-Bit Man has the gyro, puts it behind Cloud. Spargo has to be careful, but he gets the grab in just in time. Mm -hmm. Air dodging in, okay. The pressure here. Spargo. Problem. I feel like he used a lot of limit time there, you know, trying to set that one up. Like the gyro. Oh, down air doesn't connect. Hold on a second. A little full stock lead here, though. A lot of work needs to get done by Spargo, but Ape Man slowly but surely again to that second death. Guess that forward air out of shield, and that's again it's such a great tool out of shield to get that forward air out. Really, one of Rob's probably best tools, I'd say, the smash out of shield against Cloud. Oh yeah. 
Back air though, Dak, this is trouble. We've already seen Sparko take early stocks away from 8-bit man, especially at the ledge. See some of those confirms, man. They're falling up air into down air, forward air. A lot of crazy stuff can happen. Finishing touch. Oh, up air though. That's gonna do, do it. it. Thanks to that Good platform one. and the confirm. 8-bit man taking Ooh. it out. I'm not sure if it was as quick as the first game, but so far it seems like we're speeding through these. Neither of these players are really kind of giving each other an inch. But yeah, 8-bit man gets to confirm that up air gonna kill it, gonna do it. Solid win there. Yes, sir. 1-1. One, one. Really well done, man. He didn't even change the stage or anything. Like, he just kind of mm -hmm. played cleaner. He played off stage really well, too. Um, I think a part of that was, I think in game one, Spargo had the opportunity to mix up whether he was going to charge limit for his recovery, and then he did, and he had it off stage a couple times. So it's really good stuff for Spargo in the game one to recover. But I think a better adjustment there in game two, yeah. Ape man able to capitalize off stage a little bit more. I don't know. I, I kind of want to see them go back to Smashville. These games have been so fast and fun, man. I'm thinking, considering we haven't quickly gone back in a game, that maybe we aren't, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like to think True. that... Yeah, it could happen. Yeah, I mean, def that was definitely the game changer was not having that limit off stage. You're definitely right. It's and big. that's just... And and that could just be, like, the rhythm and the flow of, of the how the match went, right? Like, sometimes you have it, sometimes you, sometimes you don't. You know, you're not entirely sure when you're going to get knocked off. We saw a bunch of times there where Spargo was almost, like, holding limit too long. And then sometimes using it a little early to try and make sure it doesn't go away and and maybe mistiming that kind of uh, limit usage. But of course, it's easier said than done. You can't always guarantee that you have limit off stage cloud. So it uh, definitely just worked out better for him in the first game. But it looks like we are going to not Smashville, but small battlefield for our game three. Yeah, man, they're really taking their time here. Makes perfect <laughs> sense. Why not? Really you don't rush, man. You, don't, you want to drop down a loser's bracket. Waddy's down there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mr. E, killer's down there. All right, man. Game three starting up. Let's and deck. yeah, already that Tyro comes out, immediately gets Woo. reflected. And look at that. The forwarder's coming in 8-bit, man, wasting no time. Almost deja vu, I feel like. <laughs> and already a ton of damage. Gets that almost gets the down air, but again has to worry about these gyros. Is Spargo has the limit this time? Let's see what he does with it. Oh my man, Ape it, man is taking off with this game three so yeah, far. This the is back crazy. air. Oh the gyro. Oh he forced him to air dodge. Man, we've seen him go for so many of those downers at the legend. Oh. He just hasn't been able to get the timing perfectly yet. No nair. Both of them trading nairs on shields, trying to go for the gyro. Lands a very fat forward air, but just like that, 8-bit man, fans, eight -bit man swings it right back. Has to roll in to avoid the gyro, but again, that gyro just creating a lot of pressure, forcing Spargo to at least keep like his, his sword out to try and stop that hitbox from hitting him. Yeah, I like that roll on too. It was like identification that 8-bit man was already behind him, so the safety spot was behind. Or everything that he needed to be afraid of was behind him. So you just roll forward, like avoid the gyro, avoid the rob, you're all good. And as explosive as the start was for 8-Bit Man, Spargo responding exceptionally well. Look at it, do you see the dash? He crouched just slightly underneath that blade beam. That was really good. I don't know if he did that on purpose or not. I think it was an estimation thing, it was really nice. And either way, he's gonna get the stock for it. Zero percent on the rob, coming back around to that first stock. Very nice job by 8-Bit Man. He's playing so well, man. I know he lost the first stock, but I still think he's playing exceptionally right now. No, for sure. I mean, it's pretty much even Stevens right here. Again, a deja vu almost once more. Oh, the wave Ooh. bounce laser to keep the pressure on. And then again, Ooh. catching with the... Oh, that down air land. It's almost no way, but it almost did. It's Still. crazy because Dak, yeah. he hits all these like really hard angles and like that, that mm -hmm. fall off the platform, all these different things, the back air at the ledge, like all these crazy stuff. And he just can't hit the down air, dude. He's come so close so many times having these huge clips. It's just the down air doesn't work, so... Either way, 8-Bit Man looking good here. He has to get off the ledge, though, against Spargo, which is not easy. Big body rub. And not only that, has to be careful of these rolls right in close range. And once Spargo gets that limit, you know he's going to be looking for that limit of B. 8-Bit Man starts to roll a little too much. Oh, that up air could have been death there for Spargo, but gets the trade just in time. Very close okay. quarters again. Ooh, the dash attack does it. Yeah. Scooping over the ledge too. Both these guys have been have done such a good job defending the ledge. You know what I mean? Whether it's a dash attack from Cloud, the late lingering back air from Rob, they've just done such a good job applying pressure where they need to. Great on both sides, man. Speed. Defensive though, blade beam, love it. This is gonna be huge damage right here. 41 already, Dak. Getting out of control. Jeez, yeah, and gets in with another one, makes it 58. At this point, Hitman Man has to, I mean, has to close this out as soon as possible. Spargo looking for another limit charge. This should do it. Yep, gets right there for the pile driver. 
And now it's one stock each. And we've seen Ip Man get these like 70, 80% strings before. But will he be able to do it again with a, with Spargo already in Ooh. stage control? Has Ip Man in the corner. And at low he gets back. That's so scary, man. He was running low on, on the few. Please. Oh, running low again? No, yeah, I think Dude. he got a little bit of recharge. He's scaring us. He's scaring us for sure. Don't want to see it go out that way. That's for sure. He's going to go high here, yeah. Don't go near that ledge. It's not working out. I like the idea. Okay. Oh, right through the laser. Gets his visor on and the back air goes through. He extends his hitbox a little bit. Spargo taking another game at time on yeah. Small Battlefield. That was really nice, too, because like I said, I think 8-Bit Man is playing exceptionally right now. And I think kind of the counterplay to that is that Spargo was able to hold on to that stock, that first stock for so long. I feel like 8-Bit mm -hmm. Man had a couple opportunities to close out that stock, but Spargo just made it near impossible to do so. Um, and taking away that lead and all that good stuff from 8-Bit Man, the momentum, anything he needed to bounce back there, Spargo going up 2-0. Huge stuff there, Dak. Just really love the way he's playing the matchup right now. The pressure at the ledge is immaculate. The advantage state is insane, obviously, as we always see from Spargo. And really good limit use, too. Um, especially in terms of his recoveries, not even just the limit climb hazards as we've seen. Using the blade beam to defend himself, create a little wall in front of himself, to make it back to the ledge safely, hold on to his stocks, hold on to his rage, and make him count. Definitely. And I love how he's making the most of, you know, there's huge up air landings, right? The forward airs. Like he knows, like, okay, like if Rob's not forward airing me, I can throw out my forward air. I got to land that up air to get, uh, you know, on this landing as well. And he was landing a lot of those aerials, which was really big against Rob. You know, can have trouble against those obviously disjointed sword attacks. So that is going to be big. But we're going right back to small battlefield. Ape Man having no trouble at all going right back to the stage. As Spargo is up two to one, looking for that slot in a winner's finals. Yeah, definitely a respectable game three. So I'm not surprised that we ended up back here. You know, he says, I'm not going to change the floor plan. I'm going to change the game plan. So yeah. Go. Okay, pressure. A couple fairs here. Oh, the deja laser. vu. I'm having deja vu of my deja vu right now, right? <laughs> I've seen that string. I've seen it. I've seen it, but I love to see it. It's like Inception, you know? Back yeah. up. You know, that's a reference right there. No one's going to get that actually in the chat. It's just going to go. All right. Yeah. It was a movie. It was confusing. No one got it. Everyone acted like they did. All right. It's just a confusing... great movie, though. Great movie. Yeah. Chris Nolan movie. Right after he made the Dark Knight Return, so. Or Dark Knight Rises. Oh, yeah. Was, anyway, yeah. down there? Nope. <laughs> I feel like. Apeman Man is just having a hard time, I'm telling you. Capitalizing at the oh. ledge. Spargo, oh boy, reach with that forward air. Oh, the gyro knocked him down? I was watching Apeman Man. I looked up and Cloud was sitting. <laughs> like, how that happened? That was a great job there by Spargo to throw down the gyro. So if Rob aerial from the ledge, he grabs the gyro and not really get his move out, uh, you know, or have that in his hand so he can't get a follow-up yeah, like he would want. So mm -hmm. good job there by Spargo. And he did end up getting a kill. But Spargo goes down as well. Okay. Two, two. Oh, that would have been cheesy. Yeah. The late nair usually confirms into stuff like that. I wonder if it's just a combo. Of, it's probably good DI from Spargo, but also Cloud is pretty thin. You know what I mean? Like, it's a skinny character. He model, is. So he, can, he can be hard to combo. It's He's lean. Place, so. He's yeah, lean. He is. Yeah, you know? yeah, there you go. That's a good word for it. Yeah. He is, man. There you go. Pressure. Good job. That's a huge thing is moving around the upwards hitbox of the air of the up air and then uh, hitting him from the side. It's still hard to do sometimes, especially in his limit. He's moving so fast, but Ape and Man making it work out. I think the limit's going to run out soon. There it goes. Yep. Oh, and despite all that pressure still, Spargo somehow breaking through, gets back to the corner, but did some damage in the way. Oh, wow. That could have been deadly, but Ape and Man missed it. Both of the, <laughs> the synchronized up smash. All right. All right, guys. <laughs> up smash, man. They're looking for a roll in, both of them. Like, you're going to roll it. Well, you roll it first, like a game of chicken. Like, you roll first. No, you roll it first. Like, nope, I'm up smashing. Me too. Oh, Blade Beam again, forcing to recover low, but the back air creating some room. Spargo doesn't let up, but is forced to go back to that right platform. Doesn't grab the gyro, though, and continue to just let it spin. Ah! Oh my god, the whip grabs and the rolls. This is just crazy. The scrambles have been nuts in this game. I like that, too. No oh, no! Side bit man have a little bit of a difficulty attacking in the last step that he played in, but now we're seeing it maybe just showing the side of life again here in this last, potentially was the last oh. game against Spargo in the winner's bracket. Aver Man has to be careful. Every time I see him hanging around the side of that platform, I'm like, oh, don't get hit by an up air. Don't get hit by an up air. The blade beam comes out on shield, gets caught pile driver to the platform. It's two, one stock a piece now, but Aver Man has to stay alive, has to get this win to go to game five. Mm -hmm. Peeking over the ledge. Oh no. Okay, keeping it simple. Gyro into dash tech. Nice damage. Uh oh. 
No punish though, okay. Pressure in the air there, okay. Up till up air. Pressure here, look at that. Again, just coasting to the side of the up air and then punishing it, but this time on the on the, the part of spar button. Very good stuff, man. Oh, oh there it is. Happening. And get punished. Go, Spargo taking it three to one and punching his ticket to winner's final. And I gotta say, I mean, the scorecard is gonna say 3-1, of course, from a man, 8-bit man. But he had some amazing games in there. Uh, a couple of those could have gone either way, too, for sure. Especially with Rob going against Cloud. You know, mm -hmm. one good back throw in the side B, forward air, you know, steal the resources. But I really think this set came down to Spargo's ability to recover and get out of bad situations with Cloud. Um, just able to avoid down airs at the ledge. Anything that will made, make him lose stocks early, he's just so good at avoiding. So cashing in, getting his kills. Uh, before 8-Bit Man could, 8-Bit uh, Man could as well, so very good stuff to Spargo, no, no surprises from the kid, should have a great set against uh, Kira Rash come up here in Winner's Finals too, so guys, you're definitely going to want to stay tuned for that, that's going to be a great set, there you have, yeah, so Winner's Finals is, is Kira Rash and 8-Bit Man uh, coming up here, and then in Losers, we have Mr. E against Wadi, and then Capit, uh, Capitino uh, mm -hmm. is also in Losers Bracket as well, and then you also have Dark Falcon too, the Richter from Brooklyn also plays uh, Captain Falcon. I don't know why that took me so long to think of. Because Dark Falcon. <laughs> I was going to say, it's right in the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy enough. Well, Dark Falcon could be Ganon. You know what I mean? That's what some people in the chat were saying. Like, he's like that's, the Echo, but he's like evil. You know? Yeah. I like that's that. Fair. Like that's that fair. That's fair. That's fair. Well, I believe we are getting ourselves a Red Bull replay here of what? some of the action. And there it comes right there. Boom. You see some of that action. And like you said, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, this set could have gone either way. I think the, the score is definitely not, you know, representative of how this really went. And we're seeing some of this great action. We see how close this was. <laughs> Love to get that side, that side tilt, the forward tilt. Side tilt. Up there, though. That was a game Ape-Man took, actually. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> this set could have gone, it could have gone 3-1 either way. Crazy stuff. Oh. Catching out those nares. And yeah, I mean, this is, again, two players that really pulled out all the stops. Uh, Spargo, certainly one of the favorites to win this bracket, but 8-Bit Man can definitely still make it happen. We'll be taking on as uh, Captain Cito in Losers and that off smash to do it, Spargo. I mean, Spargo against Kirash is going to be an absolutely hype set, so I can't wait to see that. But definitely yeah. looking forward to seeing our players that are also in lower, lower bracket as well. And certainly after that performance, I would think Ape Man still definitely has a lot of juice left in the tank, a lot of fuel left in the engine for that run, potentially back to Grand Finals. Yeah, absolutely, man. Let's see how many players we got left in here. We got two in Winner's Finals, two in Losers Round 3. That's Mr. E. Wadi. That's going to be an insane set. I can't believe that's already Losers. It's why Either mm -hmm. one of those players could have made it to Grand's Winner's Side. Easily, for sure. Yeah. Capitan Tito, also in Losers, going to have to play against 8-Bit Man. Should be a good mm -hmm. set right there. That's going to be, I don't know if that's going to be me, Gunner, or Doc. <laughs> how do you choose? Mm -hmm. You know what? Like, if those are your two yeah. mains, how do, you <laughs> how do you choose which one you play as? It's like, are, are they are they a Doc main and then they also play Gunner? I feel like Gunner might be just a stronger character than, ah, it's pretty close on it. I feel like Gunner's kind of a stronger character than Doc, so. I don't know, man. It's, Probably it's, better it's matchup spread. Yeah, yeah, you know what sure. your matchups are going to be, so, I, you know, when you see, you might play that way. Well, I believe... This might wrap it up for us, though. Though I know that one more set. Mystery Wadi? Wadi? Yes, Hell we're yeah, getting Mystery Wadi. Go. All right, awesome. Cool. Thank you, the production team in my ear, letting us know. We got one more for us, and it's going to be Wadi versus Mr. E. And this is a matchup that has definitely happened before. <laughs> um, but I, I want to actually recheck that and see uh, what their set score is. But yeah, I'm excited. All right, cool. So once again, very, very uh, happily surprised. We got one more set to go, and it's going to be a lower bracket set. Uh, lose round three in the top 16. Winner of this plays Dark Falcon. So a lot on the line, of course. Yeah, and like I said, we already saw Wadi uh, play against uh, Dom a few months ago, so it should be an interesting... Probably learned a thing or two about that matchup as well. Uh, Richter going against Rob. But before we get there, obviously, it could be Mr. E as well. Mr. E against Wadi. Should be great set. I mean, this is a highlight <laughs> set for the bracket. For great sure. analysis. You know I mean? All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Easy. <laughs> easy. This commentary stuff's easy. Really it's, is. Oh, it's, yeah. Yep. Top commentator privilege, bro. But uh, <laughs> a real quick, uh, a real quick look at Smash Data GG telling yep. me that uh, Mr. E is... is Five and three against Wadi at the moment, but okay. I I don't again you know I don't know how how accurate that is, 
Um, it might even be uh, a different count here. I'm seeing different characters thrown around. Smash that, smash that always kind of surprises you because sometimes the accurate stun's not that accurate. But that being said, Wait, they definitely, they definitely have uh, some history between the two of them. Yeah, and I don't know how much of that was with Rob, but we're certainly seeing a difference. Yeah, I was gonna right say, now. looking at it, like he's gone against Mr. E. He's played Rob, We Fit Trainer, Me Gunner, and Mewtwo. So a ton okay. of characters that he's tried to use against Mr. E to varying success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that down throw. He's gonna need a forward air for his troubles. The turnaround, he gets the Nair. That was so sick. I love the idea there. Really just trying to trip up Mr. E. Combination of uh, mixing up the timing for when he'd have to tech and then also, you know, which direction he's going in. But here we go. Oh, that outrageous shield breaker. That's insane. That move, I feel like people sleep on. Great utilization of the range by Wadi there. That was amazing. Ooh, and already the, getting another aerial in there as he tries to continue to charge a shadow ball up, but Mr. E gets around it, looking to try and pile some damage on, but Wadi immediately gets out of the corner here. And he's trying to get a little more extra credit. Gets grabbed, calling that out. Doesn't go to the ledge. Not sure if that was intentional or not. Don't think so on the part of Wadi, but again, looking for these uh, these shadow balls who far hasn't scared at all. Stage play here. What's it going to be? Nice maneuvering around the shadow ball. Mr. E though, good pressure situation. The Nair coming in strong. Okay, the dash attack. Look like Mr. E held up on that actually. If you hold away, I feel like the dash attack would connect with the back air. Yeesh, center stage. I feel like Lucina's gonna blow up a few sometimes here, Dak. I think, I think she, he's just gonna go sometimes. Well, you know, it's nice to have the confusion to give yourself a little more mix up opportunity against uh, Lucina, especially in the air, right? Where you're contending with her aerials that can be deadly. So, uh -oh. oh, there's a lot right there you gotta work contend about. Looking for the disabled mystery, not even remotely in range, but something that now he's like, all right, well, that's in my head. Yeah. It's crazy that it outranged the sword, though. You know what I mean? I feel like that was a move that really needed something going for it coming into ultimate. And I think they finally gave it to him. Like, having that range on it for Mewtwo is so good. Like, if he jumps at you, he could turn around. He has, he has a command grab in the air, which is really strong. Nair, obviously, multi-hit, you got to respect. He could do nothing. And then also, he could fade away and disable, which is insane. And he has one of the best shield hold animations in the game. You see that? Right into the Ooh. fusion, into the Shadow Ball. Very nice yeah. stuff. Not a confirm, but it worked out. Not a confirm, but it makes sense, right? Most players, like, just instinctively, you got confused, you're going to hit a button and try to do something yeah. to deny the follow-up, and then the Shadow Ball, you just go into that shotgun position and get the easy call out on the aerial. So nice job there by Wadi. Yeah, Mewtwo does have a couple options out of that, including, you know, fair uh, weight, obviously, is a good option. He had fully charged Shadow Ball. That's a great one, too. Either force another jump, take advantage of it, but Wadi, obviously, doing really... There it is. That's what I'm talking about. Side B and then looking for the Disable afterwards. Really good. I mean, honestly, it probably would have ended the game. If he, if he got hit by the Disable, it's basically a shield break. You know, you're, you're free to take a hit, so... Very low shield. Surprised that down tilt didn't poke, actually. And then the down smash coming out from Wadi give a lot of damage, a lot of room. The up air again, calling out these jumps from Mr. E. So he's oh. back to the drawing board. He's trying to get out of the corner. Water, you almost ending it early. And the Shadow Ball Fair just barely whipped. I think that hit her boots. You know, I can't believe that yeah. she's living right now. That was a little crazy shine close. There. Yeah, <laughs> a little polish on those shoes. <laughs> anyway, forward air. Oh God, I thought that was it, honestly. Back air, That's yeah. it. There we go. <laughs> That's the cool thing about the confusion stall in the air. It keeps you like holding on off stage longer. <laughs> you can save your double jump. Oh wait, that's not the, well. Wow, what an know, evolution. I've never seen that one. <laughs> What's that? Rob is evolving. Mm. Who is that Pokemon? <laughs> it was Mewtwo, dude. But the confusion stall, you keep your double jump and then you get the back air, which has a really good hitbox on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that percentage, you don't really need the fair, uh, the power of the fair there to work out. So really nice job by Wadi, good awareness. I didn't realize how uh, glossy this render is, by the way. I always felt like Mewtwo's kind of, I always felt Mewtwo kind of like a plushy kind of, I don't know. If, yeah. He's he's a cat, right? He's kind of a cat. He's kind of like, he's like a sleek like cat. Bony, I don't know. Like, well, I guess there are some cats that are hairless. He's like a hairless cat. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. That's for sure. I don't know. Is. I just, that's something I just noticed there because it's a great production right in my, right in my face. Um, we go into our game two here for Town and City with Mr. E up 1 0. Or, I'm sorry, Wadi up 1 0. Oh wow, look at that. Lucina low profiled over the under the forward air while she was up tilting. That's just that's just insane. So throw the scoop. And there again, look at that. Very active hitboxes, man. That's the mix up Mewtwo wants you in right there. Either follow up, you get scared and you hold shield and you, you either get grabbed or confused. Uh or or you drop or you get hit by the nair basically. It's right. Pretty simple mix, but it's good. 
something. He's, speaking of mixes, you can see how, you know, the try, Wadi's trying to bait Mystery into throwing these aerials out with, you know, an up air and then following up with the back air, right? Another just as disjointed tail attack. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, he's just doing it. Move. Ooh, okay, nice job by Mr. E there. Dude, that's a mystery, one of the mystery specials. Ping your opponent off stage, hope they miss the tech, and then move on with your life, you know? It's easy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that's sure. I, th I think uh, Wadi was was disabling a ghost behind him. But <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> must be watching a little too much Ghost Hunters. Uh, I'm, more of, I'm more of a Ghost Adventures guy myself. Play Roy maybe a little bit, <laughs> you know? Sure, sure. Ghost. Down. This is great pressure by Mystery, by the way. Like I said, it was looking rough for him, but the second he took that stock, now Mewtwo's got to play from behind, which is just not a thing that he's very good at. Like, whatever. You can throw Shadow Balls at me, you can charge it. It doesn't really matter. You're not really accomplishing a whole lot until you start hitting them and putting them in disadvantage. Woo! That might be... Okay, good tech. Nice I should tech. say. It might be another stock, yeah. Got the tech and, and didn't get pineappled either, right? So, like, able to get back with the great angle, so... Oh, almost gets the Trump back air. Gets up just in time as Wadi. Wadi again trying to mix it up here with the confusions and does Ooh. land that second one, but Mystery of just immediately attacked. No Shadow Ball waiting. And that's like 3 1 lead here for Mystery. Yeah, you can see how quickly things spiral too after that first stock. 2 1. Here for Wadi. Yeah, it was just big, but right there, Wadi's responding. He's got an opportunity here. You two, glass cannon character himself. I think he's more glass than cannon, to be honest with you, but he's still pretty solid in terms of the offense. Sugar glass cannon, really. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, fade away fair. I like it. Fresh with the ledge, nice. Why did he get out of trouble there? That's what he needed, Dak, but I don't know. He's gotta find some offense here. He's, oh, he's hitting buttons, but they're not the right ones. Bot dodging that situation didn't work. He can't hit Mr. E. Literally hasn't touched him until just now. Yeah, and that's only because he just, you know, got caught in this dash, right? Which offline might not have happened. So definitely has to start looking for some new catalysts in neutral, try and get into advantage state for sure. Wadi getting these uh, you know, getting these shadow walls out, and it does land a few hits. The Eight. mayor, the drag down, just enough to get Mr. E out of up B range to recover, so it works out, but still E, keeping the pressure on, still has advantage, he still has the lead. Mm-hmm. Boosted F tilt. Mr. E just trying to find the KO. 130 for Mewtwo is a lot, a lot on the cat. That's what you can find here, though. Bad situation for Mr. E. Oh! The follow up one one. Now it's like, this is the thing with Ultimate. It's why do you start thinking, am I staying at Mewtwo? Am I changing the stage and staying Mewtwo? Am I changing the stage and going Rob? Am I changing the stage and going We Fit? Am I keeping the stage and going to the end of these characters? It's like, you kind of, I don't want to say you played yourself, but like, you got a lot to think about just from your from your own experiences, you know? The character that you're playing and all that stuff. I still think Mewtwo could do it. I just don't know, man. That, that looked tough. It's hard. It's definitely no, there's no good, easy solution here for Wadi, unfortunately. And, and as I was saying, like, he's used a bunch of characters against E. And E is, if you look at their history, just Lucina, Lucina, Lucina. And you see Wadi throwing a bunch of stuff and seeing what sticks, right? So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of a change up. I, I agree. I do think that Mewtwo can work. I'm not entirely sure where he really goes outside of this, though. Like, I don't think we're going to see, like, me Gunner, but we could. I don't think so. But like, I, I think Wadi can do it. <laughs> it's <and> Wadi, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, you never like, know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. We never know. Like, he's going to stay Lucina regardless of how these games go. Wadi does have some more tricks up his sleeve, I would say, in terms of characters. Yeah, I think if I had to put money on it, let me think about it. I think he's going to go Mewtwo on FD. Okay. Ooh, and there it is. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, it just you know it makes a lot of sense if you really think about it. Well, I'm yeah. glad you did the thinking for me, you know? Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Anytime, anytime. But anyway, nice big. Well, I was gonna say big lead, but not really. <laughs> it's still Mewtwo. <laughs> I would say it's even now, considering their weight. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that forward smash connection, just like Woo! that. It's even, even up to percents now. The side B does get caught out. It was like a very max range side B, slippery. But ooh, oh. was that the down throw forward air? Got that. Yeah, I think I think that's the DI recognition too. I think Wadi sees him holding in. So I don't know if Mr. E's mashing up B or something to try to get out of there after the fact, but holding in there certainly makes it easier for me to get the confirms. So falling up air though, I like that a lot. That forward air connected or traded, that would have been a stop for Wadi. I like the positioning there. A nice catch there with the Nair. Pulling out Mr. E's jumps as he tries to get in over these shadow balls. And it's it's working out, right? Nice little flow, throw the shadow balls out, catch the jump. That's pretty basic. It's working. 
And now Miss Three still again getting caught out every time these Nair. I mean, the Nair was reversed, so the hitbox on the, on the left side was higher, but the Nair worked out. And now off stage, the counter what? comes through and at the, right on the ledge itself. It's ricocheted off to the right back. Dak, I was gonna say who counters that position, but realistically, it is just a, a recognition of patterns right there. Is that Mr. E is getting attacked relentlessly by Wadi in that position. So instead of that time, he threw up the counter, defended himself successfully. I really like it. I don't think we'll see another one from him for a little while, but we'll see what Wadi does when he's in that position again. It should be interesting. I think we've been, you know, we've seen Mr. E on 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 uh, on the broadcast twice now, and we've maybe seen you know less than half a dozen counters across two sets. So he's definitely be, be, being very patient with it. Forward air here. Pressure from Wadi, man. Wow, that Shadow Ball didn't knock down. It didn't do anything. It's crazy. Just a little bit of damage. Looking for the confusion again. Has to be careful, though. I mean, Mystery is, is ready and waiting for them and just went for the dash attack that time. And then calls out with the Dancing Blade that disable. So Wadi is getting called. Oh, oh. and then the up B to go past what? the ledge. That actually worked. Not for long. I can't believe that. He just teleported right behind him. No, nothing personnel, kid. <laughs> I knew there was a beef somewhere. I couldn't figure it out. Nice job, Tech. Sliding up the ledge there. Okay, moving towards the... I like that, too. Nair to defend himself, and he used the momentum to slide forward and take center stage to just get away from Mystery. Oh, jeez. That Very was clean. so good. Yeah. And he, oh, nice. Ooh. Immediate drop right back down to the ledge, and they are just, like, going between, like, through each other's fingers right here. I know Mewtwo mm -hmm. has, like... Nugs, I don't know, but it's still slipping through. And I'm, I'm barely able to stay alive, but still look, obviously, the huge lead advantage here for Wadi. No incentive to go too hard, but why not keep the pressure on? Ooh. Back air, though, is going to... All right, this is the problem with Mewtwo. <laughs> he can easily yeah. lose right here. Yeah. He gets his shield broken or anything. He's just dead. Back throw, though. Oh, get out of here. Toss him out of here. With get him out of my face. With the side it, eye right there. The zoom, I love it. Yeah, the Dude, the he has some of the cool throws of all time in Smash. The forward throw might be the coolest, honestly. Up throw and back throw are contenders too. Down throws, all right. But the other three are, <laughs> are 11 out of 10 aesthetically. They're just simply incredible. So yeah, very nice job by Wadi. Up 2-1 now. Like I said, Mewtwo on FD. Great counter pick situation. Let's see what he bans here now. Well, staying with, go. the, with the Mewtwo was, was worth it for sure. Like we were thinking like, yeah. does he juggle these characters? Wadi clearly knows best. Sticking with Mewtwo is the right move. Oh, yeah. Let's we'll see what Mystery can come up with, though. He's definitely not out of it by any means. I've seen Mystery in this position before. Down but not out. I think we're going to look for some, probably some triplats, maybe, with uh, Lucina still. Probably my guess. I mean, that's just a good stage for uh, Fire Emblem Sorties in general. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I don't in know why he banned. But it's going to be Mystery against Wadi. I think Wadi's probably going to stay. I, yeah, I think he's gonna. Well, we already we we hear their introductions come in. <laughs> I was like, well, I know he's uh, Mr. East Day and Lucina. Not that there was any, uh, you know, debate about that. But mm -hmm. yeah, sticking with Mewtwo, going to small battlefield. Uh, you know, I always think that small battlefield and stages like this are risky for Mewtwo, just considering his weight and his size. But you know, coming here for this stage, uh, you know, I allow or I'd rather you know keeping it open for for Mr. E. So right. it works out. Because obviously you gotta, I mean, you gotta strike like Smashville Battlefield too, I'm assuming. Like regular Battlefield, yeah. so I guess that's kind of where you're gonna end up. Yeah, definitely. Oh, look at that. He tried for the anti air forward smash. I like it. Oh, now he's just going ham. What is this dude? Sometimes he's like, you know what? I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just sitting here forward smash and plays. Then he just goes Nair to coast to coast. <laughs> What's good with Wadi? Like, he's just doing whatever he can. Here we go. Okay, get nice. up attacking to get punished. Yep. Series tech chase has been great today. They've been really, really good. She yeah, it's a little low. You gotta watch out for a shield breaker here, Dak, for sure. Oh, up smash. Too. Also, whiffs. Yeah, should be back now, especially now. Now, for some reason, uh, some pressure on these shark up airs, but Mystery can't find Pater. Finally, does, though. I mean, Wadi's really been getting caught out on these uh, these confusions, so I want to be a little more uh, careful with them. That down air almost does it, sends them flying, but not enough to do the job. Yeah, Mr. E with a good adjustment there on the DI, able to hold on. This could be the difference here. Oh, no, he air dodged it. No, 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 yeah. you can't do that right there. You're going to get caught for sure. Mr. E didn't get the KO initially, but good pickup there. Wadi's still unable to find the first KO here. All right, Hangs on the ledge way too long. So, yeah, Shadow Ball, it, it, it vibrates as it moves. It goes past the ledge. It slips through, and it'll catch us. So it's even Stevens again. Great show. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, gotta, gotta throw the shout out, but 
as even as it can be, Wadi does have control so far. Landing these grabs has a shadow ball, keeping E, I mean, really like locked down, right? You can see he's either getting grabbed or getting uh, caged in by these nares. And if he jumps, he's getting hit by a shadow ball or forward air. So a really solid reads from Wadi on catching these options from Mr. E. He's got to be careful with these stables, Dak. Yeah. Good. Hold on. Okay. Up smash. Good punish right there. That's actually going to kill, too. Game the whole galaxy. galaxy. Yep, yep. Whole dang solar system and then so. <laughs> that's going to be a... That's, that's really big. Like, that was an earlier kill than we've seen in most cases from Wadi. So, I mean, now a ton of room to work with. But Mystery can definitely bring it back. Getting some of these late hits on the aerials. But just like that, Wadi strikes back. and puts down 40% just like that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Pressure from the corner. You like it. It's good stage control, man. There we go. Gets to the ledge. Ooh, nice. I like that juke, too. Using the platform there. A little ambiguous. All right, but. Mr. E, one more stock and he can bring it to a game five and stay alive here in this set and in this tournament. Wadi trying to take him down for the count. Back throw, pressure off stage. Oh, I'm telling you, I love it. Oh, he's gonna, oh, I thought oh, we gonna... no. no, 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 it's gonna be it. I think we were trying to see classic Mr. E footstool getting a little greedy off stage against Wadi though. Wadi recognition, able to make the recovery back. Man, you hate to see Mr. E go out like uh, that, but honestly, it's a pretty Mr. E way to go out. I can't believe she didn't grab that ledge, by the way. I think she was facing forward, she would have, but man, yeah. that was just so close. Like, she literally had zero magnet hands. You know, it was like opposite, you know, like magnet push away from each other. It didn't work out, but <laughs> either way, guys. Wow. That is going to be, I think, the last step for us today, but what a one to go out on. Uh, Wadi taking a good game one. Game two. Kind of got smacked up, honestly. Let's be, let's be rough for a second. And then game yeah. three, the FD counter pick was really good. And then game four, he just outplayed Mr. E on his own counter pick. So really good job there uh, to Wadi taking that down and holding on to the Mewtwo too. I, I really respect that because it's easy to go yeah. secondary, lose, especially a volatile one like Mewtwo. It's so, it's so easy to die with him and not win with him. Uh, that comparison, you know, <laughs> sticking with that character and making it work out deck. Very impressive stuff. Yeah. The gamers. You know, you you, you hate you hate to see it happen for Mr. E like that. I mean, fought so hard, but of course, someone's got to someone's got to advance, right? And now we're going to see Wadi moving on to face Dark Falcon. He goes from facing Long Island to face in Brooklyn, face in Copiag, face in Brooklyn. So gets to move right over from one New York player to another. Um, and, and not only that, we're going to get the Red Bull replay. See that action one more time. I love mm. that one. Like the, the outspacing, disable outspacing uh, shield breaker, which is Lucina extending her arm with a sword is just ridiculous. Like it's just, it's just, it's like a Mewtwo, it should have been a Mewtwo's trailer. You know what I mean? Like Sakurai showing yeah. off how he's a distance demon. <laughs> it should have worked that way, but <laughs> then, well, here we go guys. Gamers, we're working on it, all right? You see all the gamers in the chat, we're working on it. Pay attention to the Red Bull replay. Red Bull's been helping out Gobble uh, for as long as I can remember, so give them some respect. All right. We got the Red Bull replay. And of course, we want to see the last few moments of that right there the another up b not making it and that is kind of foreshadowing a little bit what we see later in the set but you know the fd change was definitely big nice counter one of the few counters as you we were saying i mean mr e the discipline right on his counters yeah. was was a critical part of him making as far as he did yeah the counter was amazing i think like in general he just did a good job recovering and i, I like that too man he's just it was such a good set man i can't look at that out her head hit the ledge how did she not grab it I feel like you got robbed there. I don't know how. Rob wasn't even on the screen or anything, but either way, they're thanks in to spirit. Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he didn't play as Rob, but he did summon the spirit of him. But either way, guys. Oh, hold on. Oh. Yeah, before, before we do throw hold to a, uh, a break and get some more sets, of course, we do want to talk about real quick, you all saw it earlier, the teaser for McSmaster 5, which is happening Sunday, June 27th, the top eight at least. Will be happening then uh that teaser super hype i've had a bunch of mix master events uh you know all the way back to you know 2014 i think beyond 2014 that was mix master three so that was a really hype trailer i hope you all caught that and definitely be on the look for that you know after seven years the mix master series back and thanks to our friends at abb so definitely looking forward to that event you know always put on a, a huge uh, a great event there so should be hype all right yeah let's roll the tape production
Nice. Well, there it is. Like Smashter 5 coming. This uh, coming up whew, soon, right? Coming up. I don't actually know when uh, it's coming up soon, right? Part of It's part of the mystery, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Did you say production? Well, well, they actually have the date. Hold on. <laughs> it's going to be next year. year. Yes. Yes. There you go. Next year. Hype. So. Hype, guys. Hype. Yeah. Looking forward to that. And uh, and Ooh. so I, I Mixed Master, another one of the many, many amazing Canadian Smash events. So can't really, uh, looking forward to that. Uh, maybe I'll be there. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, it's been hype. And we also had, of course, that awesome Red Bull replay. And we had, I mean, a lot of people here, a lot of sponsors bringing this awesome, awesome block and send tournament so far has, of course, got to start off with Red Bull, our major partner. Got it. You know, it's given the event its wings. Giving us the Red Bull replays, yep. so shout out to Red Bull. Yeah, can't shout them out enough, man. Of course, e e EMG as well. And guys, you know, we got to say two things. First off, thanks for watching Get Up My Line 2021, powered by Red Bull, of course, as we already said. And we're going to be passing it off to the next set of commentators. It's going to be Rod. It's going to be Max. Mm -hmm. May or may not have another special announcement or two. Oh, uh, they I see do. A lot of gamers. I see a lot of gamers in the chat. Gamers. Are I don't you think ready you guys to are going game? anywhere. Sunday night gaming. I know there are gamers out there. I know some gamers are ready to make. They might be ready to make. I don't know. Guess we'll find out. I think we're gonna hand it off to Max and let him let him make some decisions about moves and whether or not they're being made. So <laughs> either way, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much to Red Bull, the chat, of course, the players, everyone. Dak, you were awesome as always in production. You too, man. Killing the game. Thanks so much, everyone. Stay tuned. I know you guys aren't going anywhere, but uh, we'll be seeing you. Yo, what's going on, guys? Hi, guys. I'm Zane. I'm joined here by Nun. Hard throwing. It's not even.